That movie sucked. I kind of liked it. Movie Night Crew Network. Welcome to the restricted section where we'll fucking put your name in the goblet of fire! <laughs> she said calmly. <laughs> I am feeling particularly loquacious today because I'm joined by my dear old friend, Andrew. Say hello to the listeners, Andrew. Hello, listeners. How are all of you doing? That's good. That's really Pause good. For response. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so freaking excited because, as you may hear, have heard from their adorable giggles, our special guests today are Charlie and Carrie. Oh, my God. I always get halfway through and I'm like, did I get it wrong? Carrie and Cherry. Um, Charlie, Charlie and Carrie from Fandoms Gone Wrong. Say hello to the listeners, Carrie. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? It's been a while. Yeah, looking forward to this. Yeah, are you? Um, is the Goblet of Fire like a particular like favorite of yours? The film or how do you feel about, about it? Just... I, oh. I love the whole series. The book is one of my favorites, but I'll be honest, the movie has its issues. Okay, it has its issues. okay, we're glad but you're I do here. Love so we can all of it. So. We're going to find ex- uh, uh, exactly what went wrong. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yeah, you can catch Carrie um, and Charlie both on our Prisoner of Azkaban Chapter 10, the Marauders Map episode. Um, and then Charlie, say hello to the listeners. Hello to the listeners. Charlie has been on literally just like a lot of episodes and, and more to come this summer also, both on the main feed and the bonus episodes. So I'm not going to list them. Just go find. I, I think I'm secretly taking over the restricted section. I think I think that's that's what this Da-na-na. summer is. is it's, it's a saying. soft coup. It's just a soft coup. Just like a little friendship coup. <laughs> just a little <laughs> little friendship coup, you know. <laughs> yeah, so we're here to talk about the Goblet of Fire film the movie fucking two hours and 36 minutes long uh released in 2005 directed by mike newell it's the only one that he directed i wonder why hmm. so uh <laughs> two, it's two hours and 36 minutes how do we feel about that runtime isn't that theme? Sh- two isn't hours the too short one? or is order the phoenix the shortest one it can't be the shortest one because I'm pretty sure Chamber of Secrets is less uh, wrong. Okay, I'm pretty sure Sorcerer's Stone no. is less. No, that's no. the longest. Um, no, Sorcerer's Stone is 233. I think I, it's either. Uh-huh. Oh. So I'm going to say it's about an hour and a half to two hours too short. Yeah. There's so much mm. content that they cut out to make this movie and that. That's one of my biggest problems with this movie. Originally, yeah. it was supposed to be two movies. Oh, yeah. Order of the Phoenix is only 218. That's incredible. Yep. That's crazy. And it's the biggest book. And it's like almost 900 pages. And also, also Half-Blood Prince is 233. So this is, this is the second longest. I'm not looking at Deathly Hallows because that doesn't count to me. <laughs> That's just one long movie. <laughs> yeah, so... Deathly Hallows was split into two movies. That was like a cool thing to do at the time. And this series kind of started that. Mm-hmm. Um, do, what do we think? I mean, was that was that the one or should we have maybe done that here? Here they should have done it. It was originally going to be two movies. And I think a great stopping point would have been right after the Goblet of Fire names were pulled. So it, they were originally planning to do two movies. Is that right? Yes. I meant I to look so. up lore before the recording of this episode, but I failed so i have no lore when it was coming um, up they were talking about making it into two movies and then they decided to cut 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 and make it into wow one. that sucks it does it really sucks because it would have been amazing if they had more of the content and we had more understanding of who everybody was and what was going on and yeah. then like where would it would it stop though where where i, do I you think get you get it right on the head I, you said right after uh, the c- name came out right that would be the point i yeah. would pull it i would pull it right as the name comes out of the fire and you know everybody who goes into the room and that's it there's so much that happens before that well you could either do it then or if you wanted to stretch out the graveyard scene even longer you could do uh right bef- right after he gets back from seeing that it's a dragon Right, so right mm, after he goes with Hagrid, he sees the Hungarian horn tail breathe the fire. Cut. Yeah, you know? he's like, "Oh no, it's 
This is really yeah. happening. It's like, shit, yeah. I really could die. Cut, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so much of the story happens before they even get to Hogwarts that year. Oh, yeah. And that's what that's what drives me crazy. There's so much content yeah. that they lose when they yeah. made this movie. I mean, it's a it's it's a good movie for someone who knows the books. But if you don't know the books, you have no idea. <laughs> There's so much you're missing. Tina, to answer your question about how I feel about this movie, I feel like helmet hair. That's all I can think. The vast okay. majority of this movie is helmet hair. Just wait. No, we'll get to it. I have a so, segment planned. So much helmet hair. <laughs> so this came out in 2005. I personally was 14 years old when this movie came out. Andrew, you were about the same. Oh, we're doing ages. Years old. Oh, then I might have also been 15 because our birthday's a month apart. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, how old were you when this um, came out? Well, it's November, so I would have been eight. Okay. Okay. Um. And Carrie, let's, I'll assume you were an adult at the time. Yes. Okay. No, no. So. She, she so, was 29, as she always is and will forever be. I've been 29 <laughs> for a very long time, and we're just going to say that. Oh, my God. It's all her horcruxes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all behind me. All the Barbies. Did you, Charlie, did you see this when it came out? Okay. I think, I, I feel like this was the first one I saw in theaters. Was it, Mother? I can't remember, Probably. but, like, the other ones, I remember them, like, waiting for the disc to come home, like, being like, I need more of this, these movies, like, when it, when is the next one coming? And then, like, I feel like this is the first one I recall seeing in theaters. Okay. It probably is. That was, I mean, to an eight-year-old, this is probably fucking scary. I think I would think it was scary as an adult if I haven't. I'm so extremely desensitized to it, but like there's some very scary imagery. This is the first movie in the series that has a PG 13 rating instead of a PG. Um, and then they all go on to be PG 13. The rest of the films, except uh, half blood Prince is rated only PG despite all the snogging. I know that's so weird. <laughs> it's America. We don't, we don't care about that. That's yeah. Fine. We don't give a shit. I don't know how scared I was of this movie. I don't, I don't remember, like, my feelings of that, but, like, a movie apparently that came out the same year, as I'm looking up, um, I do remember closing my eyes for, like, half of Chronicles of Narnia when that first came out. Oh, that is so <laughs> much less scary. Than yeah. I'm sorry. I don't, maybe not half, but, like, the scene where they're killing Aslan and, like, that whole shit. Uh, that's where I was like, well, that's sad. Nope, can't do it. Can't do it. Wow. So you weren't scared of this movie, but I think the reason why is because you watched Sorcerer's Stone literally, like, hundreds of times and right you once you got past being scared of the Voldemort scene at the end of that movie you were pretty much good to go I recall oh, hiding under were... things like hiding under well chairs. you started off hiding but you were a baby <laughs> watching that movie I mean think about when Very that movie cute. came out yeah 2001 exactly oh. you were like four watching that movie and five I am baby. and you watched it one day for like eight hours straight 12 hours straight just over and over again this is something I the do. only movie that I think the only movie that scared you was probably the second movie because of the spiders. That one is, yeah. yeah. That one's that one's extra spooky. That so, but I guess that this one has its PG thirteen rating for like, uh, sort of like extreme violence and like like extreme fantasy violence. But like, not even because I'm like Game of Thrones and The Witcher. Like for children, for a children's movie, this is as violent as you could really make it. Um, and like extreme scary situation, a lot of blood. They added more blood. They're like, yeah. this movie needs more blood. <laughs> that Voldemort scene, like, hmm, that Very is scary. that is a PG thirteen scene. Yeah, but but also like so many scenes, they 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 reeled in certain scenes. Like we'll get to it, but like Wormtail's like la di da, cut my arm off, carry on with the spell. Yeah, and, <laughs> but then, I like but the then, way you put that. <laughs> But then other stuff is they make it like so much more adult and heart wrenching, uh -huh. like the Amos Diggory screaming, my boy, my son, like that is so much more PG-13 than the book was. Is it? I, I'm pretty sure when I was 13, I laughed my ass off when I, my boy! Dude, like, a, scream of a scream of grief cuts to my soul like harder than anything else. Well, you're yes, a Hufflepuff. But children, children don't have empathy. I don't know, man. So, like, I, maybe we were different children because my empathy was pretty much <laughs> off the charts when I was a kid. I, I was a, I had no empathy as a child. A scream of grief really fucks me up. I always think about one time I thought I was brave and my husband and my roommate were watching Hereditary and I was like, I'm an adult. I can watch a scary movie. And then I sat down and then some crazy shit happened. And then it was 
the scream of grief that followed that made me be like, oh, I'm actually not brave enough for this. I need to go. I need to go right now. Can't oh, do no. More. I just learned I'm not an adult yet. So I'm, I'm going to. Uh, Can't do it. Ooh, that's a mistake. If All you've right, seen bye, Hereditary, guys. you know exactly what I'm talking about. New episode for uh, Sam to do. Um, can you watch horror movies? If not, you're not an adult. Ooh. Oh, my God, Sam. I have a lot of people you could talk to about that. Okay. Oh, wow. So let's get into the movie itself. So I took notes sort of chronologically. Andrew, don't worry. I'm not doing the Sorcerer's Stone thing we did. That took like 17 straight hours where I was like, let's pick apart every line of this movie. Yeah, but I did, I did, as we were watching, sort of take notes about like questions I had and things that were missing. Um, and we can kind of just go through those chronologically and like feel free to pop in. Yes. Does that work? All right. Sure. As you kind of mentioned, Carrie, everything that happens before we get to Hogwarts is like sped up so much. So my very first note of this movie is about Amos Diggory, whereas in the book, I think it takes him like a full 50 pages to show up because we skip the ton tongue toffee. We skip Harry's time at the Dursleys. Don't even see the completely. Dursleys. Yeah, don't see the Dursleys as all. Well. Don't want to pay them. Those? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, And like the... I'm pretty sure the mo- so the movie starts with the the whole Frank Bryce dream thing. Well, mm-hmm. that that's how the book starts, isn't it? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I. But besides that, it's not. But yeah. but so so how did we like like the opening scene? Was it kind of how you envisioned in the book? The Frank Bryce yeah, Voldemort you know, it's still, house thing. It's still got you know like it's kind of got horror movie vibes. Um. <laughs> Yeah, don't like, go in the house. Kind don't of go vibe. in the house. Don't yeah, do the it, Frank. Creaking floorboards. <laughs> the one thing I noticed, like, I, I think that first scene is done pretty well. Like, I'm pretty happy with it. The one thing I noticed, and I don't really remember from Chamber of Secrets, but like n- when it was Nagini's turn to speak in the conversation, it was so obviously just like a hot lady being like, <laughs> as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a. <laughs> it like did not sound snake like at all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I um, think you're right. That's about the only that. thing that kind of got me. Yeah. The only thing I was going to say about it is I, I think the way it starts off, unless you've read the book, you have no idea who this guy is walking into the house. Exactly. Is he the neighbor? Just like a rando. Yeah, he's the caretaker, but you don't really know that. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it seems like the director, instead of going with the way that it's supposed to be, where like you think, because I mean, when the first time that you read Goblet of Fire, you think that you're meeting like a brand new important character that's going to like somehow change everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All Frank Bryce. He oh, could have changed everything. He could have changed the world. Well, he gets a description. But then, yeah. Yeah. It, all mm-hmm. of a sudden, he's like, and that, that's what's so jarring about it is that it's so sudden that like he's just dead. And it's yeah. like the director read that and was like, confusing. Got it. And it's like, nah, dude, you missed. You missed what it was supposed yeah. to be about. Like, misdirection, not confusion. <laughs> this is kind of a fatal flaw, I think, of a lot of film and TV and books, I'm actually thinking, is, like, introducing a character just to kill them. Mm. Um, and it's like, oh, that has no meaning. And I'm thinking about, I recently reread the Hunger Game series, and at the very end of Mocking Jay, they do that a lot. They're like, here are 18 new characters for you. We actually need to kill 18 of them, so here's 18 you're going to come out fine. No one you love is going to die. <laughs> don't name them at that point. Like, why are they even named people? I couldn't keep them straight. I was like, okay, so you're number one. You're number two. You're number three. And you're all going to die. And they were dying so quickly that I couldn't keep up. I was like, oh, they died in the last scene. Flip, 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 flip. Oh, my God. They died in the last scene. <laughs> it's fine. It's all fine. Um, so justice for Frank Price's personality and backstory. I just think yeah. it's so funny because I'm, I'm like on the Wikipedia for Goblet of Fire. And, like, Frank is, like, one of the last cast members mentioned in the cast section. Aww. The The one Aww. after him is Ollivander, whose scenes were cut. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I think the other thing about cutting him out is, I mean, you don't... It gives... By giving a little description of him at the beginning, not just showing him walk into the scary house, it gives you a little bit of the beginning of the backstory of yeah. Voldemort's childhood yeah. right which they don't explore in the movies ever yeah at all. you don't <laughs> ever. even know, you don't know where he came from he just was 
pod. That's the thing. Um, when we get to the graveyard and it's like, oh, this is the grave of, of Tom Riddle, which is like, as, as a reminder, that's like an optional thing to read the gravestone. Mm. Like people aren't just reading the gravestones in this shot. Like that's something that's probably lost on so many movie only well, viewers. I mean, Harry does like they do zoom in on the one grave and that's it. I don't believe people would read it if they didn't have to. Exactly. They wouldn't have read it. They but like wouldn't. Harry was like, oh, this is important. We're going to force it down Wait. their throats. <laughs> That was it. Okay, guys, this is what we do. We, we film the scene like normal, and then we go ahead and put a glow special effect on the name on the grave, so as the camera a, goes by... A literal it, spotlight. People will be like, oh, why is that all shiny? Maybe I should pay attention. That grave is just, like, so extra, though. God. Oh, yeah. It's, well, it's yeah, part of the spell. It. They made it part of the spell, at least. But, yeah. like, damn. I just want a giant Grim Reaper next to my grave. <laughs> okay wait we'll get to the graveyard because same um, <laughs> so like then harry wakes up but he gets woken up by hermione who sorry for saying this but is extremely naggy and obnoxious throughout this whole movie yeah. even more so than usual i think um and she's like wake the fuck up ronald wake up i said and it's like whoa bitch it's 6 a.m i love when he just <laughs> like pulls up his his blanket Cover to his hide boobies. his boobs. Um, <laughs> he's wearing a shirt. He should be prepared. This is a vision of his future life. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up Sean so gently and tenderly in the morning. So I'm like, hey sweetie, I've made you a beautiful breakfast. Aww. I love you, my dear child. It's 11 a.m. Wow. I'm jealous of Sean. <laughs> That's impressive. Just kidding, he doesn't sleep in that late. <laughs> because of me. Yeah. I. Uh, it's almost like with this one... Getting back to, like, Hermione and how they've made her so over-the-top, like, mm. obnoxious almost. It's almost like what they did is they looked at polling data from the third movie where people were like, yeah, she, you know, Hermione's becoming, like, a much more realistic character that isn't just a constant nag. And they tried to over-adjust, you know? Mm. Like, oh, no, she can't be that. She has to be annoying. Show Hermione punching more bullies. That's yes. all we want. That, that's Absolutely. literally all we need. On the track of Hermione, again, the Wikipedia page, wonderful. Um, description of Harry's other best friend and the trio's brains. The trio's brains. I love yes. that. They have I love that. All the brains is belongs to Hermione. And that's it. One <laughs> set of brains for three to share. I love it. <laughs> so they like wake up and then they're just on their way to the World Cup. There's no preamble. There's no uh, invitation from Mrs. Weasley. The Weasleys don't have to get him. They don't explain how the Weasleys have obtained Harry. We, we just assume that magic was involved. Do we even see Molly <laughs> yeah. at all? No? I don't think we even see Molly. Damn. I don't recall it, yeah. All of the adult actors in this series are such big names, and there's so many of them in every movie that it's like, God, cut whatever we can. We cannot afford to bankroll this many fucking exactly. legendary actors. <laughs> Right away, we meet Amos and Cedric Diggory, and it's because they live geographically near to the Weasleys. They're walking to go get the port key together uh, to the World Cup. Um, how do we like the casting of Amos Diggory, the dad? I think he's fine. He fine. sure is a dad. Yeah. He sure is a dad. <laughs> That's a dad. Um, how does it change his character that the movie doesn't show any of the super shitty stuff he says in the book? In the book, he's like really rude to Harry. Yeah. And in the movie, he's just a dad. Probably wearing New Balances. <laughs> Wizards don't know about New Balances. It's the one thing they do know about from the uh, muggle world. Every dad the world over loves New Balances. It doesn't matter if you're a wizard or not. It doesn't matter what country you're from. New Balances are just eternal for dads. It turns out that New Balances are actually the only thing that wizard kind will share with muggles. They're actually co that comfortable because they are magical. <laughs> oh, God. For arch support. Magical arch support. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of just turns Amos Diggory into like a complex character or into like a flat character pretty much by yeah. taking away that he's like a good dad, but like a shitty guy. Well, yeah. And like, I always like... I. Growing up playing as many sports as I did, I knew a thousand Amos Diggories, right? Yeah. These are these are just dudes that they don't have like it, it's they're doing fine at work. It's not that they just don't have much going on, right? Like their kid is their world and their kid did a thing great and it happened to be sports related and they're gonna tell everyone. And it's like, 
Hey Harry, you know how you're famous because your parents got killed? Well, my kid beat you at Quidditch. My yeah. much older kid beat you at Quidditch. Don't yeah. you feel stupid? <laughs> like, right. That's okay. So He's going to die anyway. Doesn't. Matter. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. He'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So, and then let's talk Cedric Diggory, played by none other than Robert Pattinson. Um, do y'all think that this character was well cast? Yeah, I love Sedward. I think he was fine in this role. Other roles, maybe not. But this role he was fine in. <laughs> okay, so we like the casting. He's good. The only thing that I... Do they specifically talk about him being, like, ridiculously good-looking in the book? Yes, mm-hmm. okay. they do. He's hot. Yeah. I, 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 I don't think I ever, like, clocked that just because for my personal... Like, when I was, you know, a kid reading this, I didn't really care Cedric how Cedric is canon hot. Yeah, okay. and Harry then, would then, know. Then, yes, I yeah. have nothing to say, yeah. Like Harry, every yeah. girl wants him, yeah. And some of the boys. <laughs> Harry. I, I think that Cedric is well cast, but at the same time, like so many characters in this series, I think that the movies made him too vanilla. You know, mm. it's like the, I always think about the Cedric Diggory from Puffs. Welcome to the Puffs. Hi. Hi. That's like my head cannon. Yeah. Cedric Diggory. He's like, ta- he's not like conventionally like so sexy, but he is like, very okay, handsome. Scene, he's um, he he's like <clears throat> mixed race. Yeah, he's got like great charisma. I think that's something that Robert Pattinson does sort of lack for Cedric is like the charisma factor. I think he's like almost a himbo in Puffs. Oh, I love that. Like he could be him. a bit oh beefier, God. but like watch that right now. You know, just dumb and cute. Yeah, <laughs> he's puffy. Yeah, so Cedric Diggory in the movies doesn't does not say puff to me at all. As far as the charisma goes, I think the problem is that Robert Pattinson isn't charismatic. Right. That's why you should cast <laughs> him as role. Batman. Mm-hmm. No, he Batman was... Batman is the answer. He was... Batman, he was half good in that. No. Oh, I think he was great in that because yeah. he pretty much had to do nothing besides sulk in the rain. He was <laughs> really yeah. good at that. See, I liked him as Batman. I did not think he was a good Bruce Wayne. I'm just Ooh, me too. There. I completely he's agree. Terrible but, the, Bruce but the new movie, he spends like 95% of it as Batman. Think, There's next to no Bruce Wayne going on. So it kind of worked for him. I think the problem yeah. there is um, not to get keep going with this Batman combo, but like Batman, he, he hasn't separated the Bruce Wayne persona yet. Is he still early right. Batman? Like he hasn't been like, he needs to I do need some to, method acting. I need to like become this playboy. Like, yeah, he needs to, like, go out into the world and do some, like, method acting practice and, like, pretend to be a Bruce Wayne type. Yeah. He needs to watch the Michael Keaton Batman movies to get an idea of how to play oh, equal yes. sides That's of charismatic and creepy those. crazy. Yes. I love I love all of the old Batmans, and my favorite probably is everyone else's least favorite, but the George Clooney one Ooh. is so good. Batman <laughs> and Robin is so fun. You take your and you get uh, the hell out of here. No. Dude, Batman and Robin is no. my favorite. The only thing I like about Batman and Robin is Chris O'Donnell. Sorry. Um, oh. First of all, I've never seen a more gay-coded character in my life. Uh, second of all, I guess it's not the right movie. We're not talking about that movie. But Uma Thurman in that movie, guys. Come on. Come the far on. superior Batman will always be Adam West. I, I just yeah, refuse no, to acknowledge you watch anything some other than Batman who asks every question as a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Riddler's supposed to do. <laughs> I do like Michael Keaton a lot. I need to rewatch all of those. But okay, that we're in the wrong... Thanks a lot, Robert. We're in the wrong <laughs> movie series now. Oh my gosh, look how it happened. Oh God. The, the only, my only other note for this little like pre-World Cup scene is like I love watching videos of them filming the port key scenes where they're all like on this crazy like spinning thing and then they all get like yanked back on ropes. Oh, I need oh to my watch God. that. I need I to see that. That fun. looks awesome. I'm not the only one who wanted to ride that carnival ride, right? Like I would go. That's that looked so fun that I would do. I would go to like a really crappy county fair and be like, "Well, I mean, it's only an eight foot fall. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be fine." Like, it reminded me of like on those things on playgrounds that contemporary moms are probably up in arms about, like the spinny, like pie shaped. Things you know? Do you know what I'm talking about? That was like my favorite thing oh, yeah. to do at the, mer- yeah, at the playground. Too, the merry-go-round. Like, um, yeah. 
you would like run and make it go like so fast and then mm. you would like jump on for yeah. dear life and try not to let the centripetal force like fling you into the abyss of mulch of pointy new mulch on the playground. God, that's that- awesome. We had rocks. We didn't even have mulch when rocks? I was a kid. It was rocks oh, and wow. dirt. Oh, yes. Back in the olden days. Back like, in the olden days. And these up, were metal and hot. Up. That spinny thing just <laughs> makes Loved me think em. of Spy Kids and that one scene in Spy Kids. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, it was just, look at me. Ready? Look me in the eye. Let's no, do this. We're not crying. We're not crying today. <laughs> it's a playground. You don't cry at the playground. And you want to stand up and holding it on with just one hand to see if you can, while it's spinning yeah. really, really fast. Yeah. yeah. I only know we had mulch at my playground when I was a kid because I was a really cool girl and I was allergic to fresh mulch. So every year when they remulched the playground, mm. I wasn't allowed to go to recess. Oh, oh man. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So let's go to the World Cup. Just kidding. Haha, ha, let's go to the World Cup, but not go to the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do we feel about that? Just none. How do we feel about the fact that they dropped the World Cup from the World Cup? Uh, terrible. Um, I feel about as good as they do sitting on the top box that's not like the good top box. Like I know, it's supposed to be like the the penthouse the, yeah, seating. The, yeah. mm-hmm. the minister's box. They're supposed to... In, it's supposed to be the other way around. Like the Draco Malfoys are like, oh, look at them. Yeah. And instead you want, it's like, ha ha. You want to be on the top when you're watching Quidditch. You don't want to be on the bottom. You want to be They're on the They're flying. Fly. Of course you want to be on the top. And mm-hmm. honestly, the whole minister bit with the Bulgarian minister pretending not to understand English would have been a very funny little gimmick in the movie. Yeah, it would have been cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I might be a little different than y'all. I'm fine with them taking out the actual Quidditch. Right, like I like Quidditch, but I'm fine with them taking that out. But like, I'm I'm with you all though that if you're going to take that out, at least include the other stuff. At least include yeah. the sustenance and get the details right. Right. So yeah, like, like show what's happening while the game's going on in the background because there's a lot. We don't happening. have to watch the game. We can just have all the stuff right. going on while the game is existing. I would like to see the introduction of the um, the mascots though, because I think that was kind of cool, and that would, that's a nice visual effect that they missed. That's actually, I think I know why this happened this way, right? Like, we, I, they've, I think they've come out and said that the reason they didn't include Winky is because of how ungodly expensive it is to do the house elves, mm-hmm. right? So if you're not going to do Winky, then you can't really do the box, because there's a lot, like, as far as, like, a purely plot part goes, that's really the reason that you have them in the box, is to make yeah, Winky, Yeah, it's right? true. So if you take that out, then it's like, well, why would we include this other incredibly expensive CGI shot of the... The leprechauns forming the figures in well, the Well, and we and definitely stuff. can't have Vila. No. That's the kind of thing that's yeah, the kind of thing that's... that is like great in text, but if you were to try to make it real, you would very quickly realize that it was like an uncomfortable sexist thing. Right. So <laughs> oh, because I liked of, it. but here here's the, the ramifications of that though, right? Because it echoes out. Because if you don't have Winky, that's why you have to make these changes in the storyline. Because yeah. Winky is vital to the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then if you make she those is. changes. It, Justice for Winky. Yeah, you've got to like, you you remove Mrs. Crowley. Like there's all this domino of effect that all comes down to, well, we don't really want to spring for uh, the special effects for this house elf on this movie that will literally make all of the money. Yeah, and it's literally, it's like no part of this movie doesn't already have a fuck ton of special effects. So it's like, yeah. I feel like they pick and chose like not the right they, they included a scene that wasn't in the books of McGonagall teaching everyone how to uh, dance, which don't important. get me wrong, is funny, but like that's like a four minute scene or a five yeah, minute scene and long. they include that, but not the box scene because yeah. that involves no special effects. Right. You're right about that. You're right about that. Yeah. That, that, I think that and like, that's why you get the line of like Harry, like spilling the juice, right? Once again, funny. I like it, but. It's only there because it costs <laughs> nothing to shoot that. It costs zero dollars and zero cents to make Daniel Radcliffe spit juice on himself exactly. for 15 tapes. Yeah, and then Cho Chang, like, <laughs> giggle with three extras. That, that's that's the cheapest scene you're going to so get. So fucking dumb, I'm, dude. I'm mad about know. Winky. They, she's so important. Yeah. God. It really, mm-hmm. taking out that connecting element really does just pretty, like, fully change the entire plot. And, yeah. like, I, I get why they did it. I wish they hadn't. And like you said, Carrie, if there had been two movies, they would have had time to commit to her and a budget to commit to her. Yeah, they would have had, had two, two budgets. film budgets. Yeah. 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 The main one thing that I really miss um, from the World Cup is uh, and this is like a small thing, but 
The whole leprechaun gold thing with Ron um, paying Harry back for the Omniocularers in leprechaun gold and then realizing like halfway through the book that that money disappeared and Harry never noticed. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I hate being poor and he's not mad or anything. It's just like a statement of fact. And I think that's a really good vulnerable moment from book Ron that movie Ron doesn't get that. He's just like, he's just like, oh, still poor. Like they make all these little, the the movie's like, look at him, still poor over there. And it's like different from him taking ownership of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And because you cut out the leprechaun gold, you also cut out the plot line of Ludo Bagman paying back. You don't need Ludo Bagman. uh, Right. Fred and Ron. So then you take out a scene that shows how brilliant Fred and Ron are because they're the ones who realize that you bet. Fred and George. Fred and George. Excuse me. Excuse me. That they're the ones that were smart enough to realize you bet on Crumb catching the snitch, but Ireland winning. And here's the thing. It's like, it's like, yeah, we take out Ludo Bagman. We take out the betting. That's fine. That's a huge plot line that takes a, it takes a lot of screen time and doesn't actually add anything. But what they did instead is they spent, they made Fred and George spend the whole movie just like has, harassing their peers yeah. for, for bet money. And that's a different character choice than, yeah than what actually happened in the books. That says something different about their characters. Yeah. So if you're going to like, that's kind of what I, what bothers me so much about movies. It's like, if you're going to take something away, don't put something so shitty in its place because you almost always get the tone wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's also the curse of like something that gets as big as Harry Potter gets is you're going to get those movies, but the movies aren't going to be made true to the books. They're going to be made by a team of accountants and rewriters. Right. Yeah. And so they're going to be like, well, how can we save another, fi- you know, $5 million? We cut out this scene and this scene. How do we do that? We change the script here, here, and here. Yeah. And, like, I get it, but that that's not really okay, you know? Right. And you're right that it costs $0 to have Fred and or George shake a box of coins and be like, place your bets here. Yeah, exactly. It's more filler that costs nothing in between these giant scenes of yeah. massive CGI. If they want to save money, they could have done it on some of the casting, though. Seriously. I mean, yeah, the cast, like you real. said, was hugely expensive because they, first of all, went with an all-British cast, and then they went with all stars. I mean... And certain actors, like Alan Rickman, does zero things in this film. So he's just standing in the background of every every scene being like, I'm a, I'm a cool guy. I don't abuse my students. I don't have any dialogue in this movie. And it's like, they had to pay him to be there. The one thing he does is yell at Harry like once for stealing stuff. And that's it. He's got like one good scene. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I only realized this just today on my 7,000th rewatch of this movie. I realized this like half an hour ago. Snape's only line is being like, there to see him, Potter. I could make you spill all your secrets. And then we get to the Barty Crouch Jr. reveal, and they're like, here, take some Vera to see him. Where's Mad Eye Moody? He doesn't answer, even though he's under <laughs> he's under Vera to see him. He does not answer, truthfully or otherwise. And then that's the end of the scene. They don't use the Vera to see him. Go on, yep. cut it out if you're not going to use it. Ah! Yep, yep. <laughs> Yep. He answers zero questions it's under duress. It's fine. Because <laughs> he's nuts. They, they transferred Veritaserum to be like a zone of truth in D&D, where it's like, yeah, he'll only speak the truth, but there's nothing making him talk. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? What? Okay, I'm so sorry. Okay, we skipped ahead a little bit. One <laughs> other thing about the, the World Cup. So if we're talking about the, the terrorist uh, events at the World Cup, um... They like the movie dropped the muggles from that completely. Yes, How do we feel about I that? I think that would have made it very, very dark. It would have it would have upped the rating. Yeah. yeah. Just just a I bit. I mean they're the they already look like they're the KKK with those hoods. Yeah. I mean, the movie made them look more like the KKK than the book did, that's yeah. for sure. Oh god. Um, How do we feel about those masks? Like the Death Eater masks in this movie and how different they are later on? Did you did I you notice? I need like a on. visual. I need. Oh, they're very ornate. Yeah. 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 Like I, they, I, they're like beautiful. They're handcrafted. Well, they got these from Etsy. Well, later on, <laughs> they look so pretty and so nice. But like in the fourth movie, they're just like half skeletons. They look like they're bought at the dollar store, and I kind of love them. I kind of I kind of have to disagree with you though, because like while they do look like skulls versus the other ones, I don't think the other ones look as pretty as they do ominous. Yeah. Right. Like that took time and effort to make something that looks unsettling in a very extreme yeah. way. Right. Mm-hmm. Whereas like yeah. the bone one, like I think the fourth ones are probably closer to the books. Like if yeah. I remember correctly, that's probably. closer to what they're actually described as. 
but it really it once again it just shows the weakness of that bitch's writing that like and it's going to be scary with skulls and pointy hats. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, some... versus like this elegant, like, oh my God, you look like a dark Jedi coming at me. <laughs> Something else that's important to remember is that at least in the book, they talk about how like these are per- perhaps not real Death Eaters or like not representing themselves as real Death Eaters at the World Cup. They're kind of just being like shitty terrorists. Like, yeah. remember, yeah. there was those like, uh, videos of people at the January 6th insurrection wearing like fucking festival gear and stuff. It's like, who knows what those insurrectors wear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, they wear these skull masks throughout this movie specifically, but I'm just like, I don't know. It makes me feel like the Death Eaters in this movie were like, um, shit, I can't find my mask. Honey, where's my super suit? Kind of thing. And they just <laughs> grab this, like, randomly and then, like, hit the road to go meet Voldemort or go do some crimes. Somebody shows up in a, uh, in like a Venetian mask because they can only find that one souvenir from <laughs> New Orleans that one year. And they're like, I guess this will have to do. They're there just running around one hand on their wand, one hand on the stick, like oh holding God. up their mask. Ah! <laughs> there you go. That's funny. Great visual. So in the book, the, uh, the dark mark kind of just like comes out of the wilderness and, and like the reader does not know who cast it. But in the movie, it's like, hey guys, David Tennant cast it. Yeah. <laughs> well, in I the mean, book, you can they kind had of see it cast it, yeah. with Harry's wand though. And I think that's a, yeah. that's a, a thing that it's yeah. like a whole thing. on Harry throughout the whole book because yeah. Harry's wand, Harry is knocked out. His wand ends up being the wand that casts the spell. Obviously, we know who cast it, but you know. That's the whole idea that then all of a sudden Harry is suspect throughout the rest of the book. Yeah, but I it's just like in the book, though, it's like it could have been anyone. It could have been Lucius Malfoy. It could have been Draco mm-hmm. Malfoy. Like it could have been any of the good guys. Like it could have been anyone. But like the movie watchers know right away it was David Tennant, whoever the fuck that guy is. Hey, yeah. we we maybe yeah. saw that guy in a dream. I don't know. But like maybe it's not the same yes. guy. It's it's dark. This movie's um, dark. By the way. <laughs> This movie has the least sexy David Tennant out of all the David Tennants. You don't like oh, yeah. Snake David Tennant? No. No. Snake uh-uh. him? I hate it. He's gross. I love his performance, but... I, I, I really... I, I gotta brag on myself, because I think I summed it up best when I said uh, that this the way that David Tennant plays this role, you genuinely get the feeling that if Marty Crouch Jr. had one wish in the universe, it would be to be able to lick his own eyeball. Oh, yeah. He would, like, um... <laughs> Oh my god, who does that in some Disney movie? Some creature licks their Stitch. own eyeball. It's Stitch. Oh, Stitch, yeah. yeah, okay. Shout out to Taylor. <laughs> so does anyone have any last comments before we go to fucking school? We're like halfway done with this episode and we haven't gotten to school yet, much like the book. <laughs> Off story for a second, I have to say, I want that extendable tent. Yeah, oh, we, yes. we all That is the most story. amazing thing ever. I think there's an Airbnb to that to that uh similar to that in virginia mm-hmm. where like it looks like a little tent and then you go in and there's like a slide down into like a giant airbnb isn't that oh, fun fuck? that would That's be true. amazing we should go okay andrew was our friend group texting about that or something similar something similar yeah okay you know maybe me we i don't usually there. if i see tents i tend to try and stay away so oh i love I am camping. taking you camping this very weekend in a tent yeah. As someone who loves to camp in a tent, I would love to have a tent that that was that amazing in that that's little glamping. amount of effort to put up. That's, not, that's yes. not even camping. That's glamping. It's great. <laughs> My thing with camping is like, I love camping, but I can't stand tents. They make me feel like I'm drowning. So I always sleep outside. <laughs> oh, I love a tent that's glamping. I have to do it up with a chandelier and bedding Ooh, and all fun. that. Yeah. I don't just get a mattress on the floor. No, it's good. I, I like taking it one step further and going to a physical building with air conditioning and a bed. And I like, think that's called a hotel. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, you're familiar with them. I like those too, but if I'm going to do that, it's going to be nice. Okay. To school. To we're, school on the train. We go. we're on the train now. Um, okay. Here's my only note about the train. Do uh, Daniel Radcliffe and Katie Lang have any chemistry? No. As no. Harry and Cho? Even no. just 1% chemistry? Not at all. I would actually argue they have great best friend chemistry. I was going to say they repulse like the same end of a magnet. I, I, I honestly get the feeling they could hang out. Not like, 
I, I don't know. I get that. I don't think There's they like would ever date. There's something weird but. with Daniel Radcliffe in the Harry Potter series where he has zero romantic chemistry with anyone. And I know it's not a Daniel Radcliffe thing because I've seen him in other stuff. Like his romantic chemistry with his love interest in Horns, for example, is incredibly compelling and charming. But Daniel Radcliffe in the Harry Potter universe is is not... The, all of the sexual attention goes directly to Draco and nowhere else. <laughs> well, it's almost like Daniel Radcliffe is too good at acting as Harry. And the problem is that mm. Harry inherently has no sexual, like, magnetism yeah. to him whatsoever. Yeah. Like, Harry is a beaten <laughs> and mentally broken child who, like, has no self-confidence, is the living embodiment of imposter syndrome... And is incredibly capable, but has more faith in his clothing not falling apart than he does in him being able to go throughout <laughs> his day fine. Like, he just doesn't believe in himself. Right. And, and he doesn't notice shit. So Daniel shit. Radcliffe is like, mm-hmm. right, Daniel Radcliffe's like, I can do that. And he does it, but that points out that no one would ever be attracted to Harry. Yeah. See, I think Daniel Radcliffe himself is unattractive. Oh my god, I think he's so hot. His personality is so fucking sexy. I like his personality, but I just, yeah, I don't know. Personally, I mean, Mm, he's I would risk it all for Daniel Radcliffe. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously, I would go Matt Lewis. When I'm thinking about how attractive I find Daniel Radcliffe, I'm like a 30-year-old woman looking at everything he's done since the Harry Potter series. Like, Harry Potter, he wasn't my guy back in the... I don't think I was sexually attracted to any of these characters as a kid. I, I think I thought they were all... Gross. (laughs) Gross. <laughs> and I was right. It's because they were all like bloody and sweaty and like bloody and sweat uh works great for girls of Rivia. They, they yeah. were all bloody or sweaty or Ron. Like Ron is <laughs> both. Yeah. This is Ron's yeah. for sure, like least cute movie. Okay, but yeah. let's focus. So um the Hogwarts students arrive at school and then immediately the very same day the Bobatons and Durmstrang students also arrive. So oh, um, it's like moments later. Yeah, they're, like they're... what the fuck did these kids think was happening with these like intruders? I know they didn't even get a chance to get settled. Can you imagine being the muggle-born first year? Oh my god. I just no like, idea just like why, why is there a Pegasus? What's happening? <laughs> your magic. This is your school. Get in this house. Wait, is this not this normal? This is a Triwizard Tournament. Is, is this thing not normal? <laughs> Do we do this every year? <laughs> and that right, though, if you're like a muggle-born and you see a giant pirate ship rise out of the water, yeah. that's fucking amazing. And I would be like, I would be over the moon for that shit. L- love me a good yeah, time. Very like- cool. But if you didn't know what was happening, if you saw the Durmstrang ship rolling up, I would be like... A enemy are we oh, under no. siege we are under siege <laughs> i'd be like hey by, dude. Uh, by water somehow i brought this up <laughs> oh. during the movie chat but like god that carriage always gives me anxiety because i'm like if i were riding in it i would be puking because just yeah just how it sways maybe there's like a stabilizer maybe there's a stabilizer in it charlie just wizards you. don't have things like that they don't they don't know a stabilizing things. spell no Wizards aren't smart. I'm not talking about like a good undercarriage. Okay, I, we need to talk before we go on. And this is probably my number one biggest complaint with this movie. I think this this issue in this movie mm-hmm. does the most damage to the the world at yeah. large. Can, like can I, I think guess? I think I this choice goes way beyond this movie. Please guess, Andrew. Is it the fact that a group of women that are actually girls because they're clearly identified as being 17 have a scene where they come into the Great Hall and the camera decides to focus right on their ass? You went too specific. I think the fact that Durmstrang and Bobaton get gendered in this film is extremely, extremely problematic as a general It's kind of offensive. France only has women... And uh, Bulgaria only has. Is it Bulgaria? Do we know where it is? Dude, France equals femme and Bulgaria equals mask is one of those like fake things like cats equal femme, dogs equal mask. It's like it's like gender is fake. Oh, my God. Hogwarts is non-binary. Wait. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. First of all, it's called co-ed. If you're a school, it's called (laughs) co-ed. Yeah. And like it is just. It is so offensive because there is some really good 
representation of femboys <laughs> from Bobaton specific. I remember that one line where Harry's like, why is that boy in his pajamas? <laughs> and it's like a Bobaton's boy who's wearing like silk or satin. I'm like, and Harry's like, why the fuck would anyone be wearing silk or satin? Yeah, right now? I, I love how they were just making fun of them. Like, you're you're freezing. Why do you think you're freezing? You're you're wearing nothing. Yeah, you're in Scotland, my man. So it's just like it sets such a terrible precedent. And like and then as Andrew said, like the immediate the immediate repercussion of that is like it's demonstrated in the very next scene. It's like, here's the repercussions of gendering these schools. We get an ass shot of 17 year olds. Okay, okay. Only Fleur is supposed to be Avila. Fleur and her sister. That's the thing. That's yeah. the that's but it the, seems that's like they what all makes are. this even worse. That's what makes this even worse, is they're like, not only are they femme, they're fucking hypnotizingly sexy. Because women are like that. And it's like, it's just so wrong. And like the fact that they all run in in this like really performative way. They're like, look at my little tushy as I'm dancing down the pathway. And it's like, it's, I mean, they, the movie made these characters ask for sexual attention. And that is unforgivable. They never really explain the yeah. Vila well, thing the Vila They don't important. explain it at all. So they don't know why no, they're just sexy these girls ladies. are overly they're not sexy Vila. in the first place. They're mesmerizing. And that adds to Ron being even stupider of a character later when he like fucks up asking her to the Yule Ball because he's like, oh, I just got hypnotized because I'm a, I have a penis. It's like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm yeah. sorry. I want... That ass shot is so inappropriate. God, I want the Vila to to like hypnotize a lesbian. I really want that. Where was that story? Yeah. Like? yeah. Oh. <laughs> are are Vila oh, yeah. like a traditional magical creature, or is that something? Yeah. That hey, hey it Andrew, is? Okay. we'll talk about that in a different episode that I may or may not be on for the restricted section. You are on it. <laughs> <laughs> you literally are on it. So Vila are um very. Oh no, this is Harry Potter dot fandom dot com. That's not the Re- right remember that that oh, well. no. it's that book that you had that it referenced yeah, Harry I Potter. Ha- I did have a book. <laughs> yep, yep. I had like a I had like a magical creatures book, and I opened to the Vila page, and I was like, you probably know about Vila from Harry Potter, and, and I'm pretty sure I got rid of that book that day, as you should. <laughs> and then. And then this isn't as problematic because boys don't get sexualized, but like the boys just run into the hall full speed, setting things on fire. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, boys. And the do- music's like, dun, 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 penises. They do acrobatics. Yeah, that's why they have staffs instead of wands, because it's like, hey, look, we have giant dicks. Didn't you know? Oh yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. And they will set you on fire, girl, because they are, like, sparking or whatever. And then, like, Crumb, yeah, it, it, I'm sorry, but I, I am vastly unattracted to Crumb in, and how they did ooh, him. Can't relate. Can't relate. Can't relate. Well, he's too cool to perform. <laughs> he just kind of walks in there like, see, I'm so cool. Fucking look at me. He I like people so with good hair. That's, like, a thing. He has none. For the record... Stanislav Yanevsky, who plays Victor Crumb, was born in 85. Wow. So he was like 15 years older than Emma Watson when they filmed this. Jesus. But more importantly, the fact that I've been thirsting for him for years is completely fine. It's good. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wasn't I, he I like forgot. He's a good guy, though. Yes. Like, I, for- like, I don't know. He's, if, right. I, he's a pro something. I forget that when you look up pictures of him as an actual human, he... I just can't finish... Isn't he's padded like, by a bunch of furs. I mean, like, no, dude, he's very so hot. he probably yeah. looks so better hot. when he's not Victor. I just don't like oh. him as Victor Crumb. Oh, he looks so much better. Oh my Charlie, God, we've met him. So hot. Hey, Jimmy, we you said this whole thing about we making him. sure oh, we didn't meet him, but we him? saw him. Virtual. He was at LeakyCon. The same he was time at Leaky we Con. and he's he's a, he did a, pa- a couple panels. He's I'm pretty sure I didn't go to his panel, but I did hear about it later. You didn't go to the panel? He was on a couple. Oh my god! No, I don't think I went to his panel. What has dick? It was a whole thing. But here's the oh, thing that I'm just looking at pictures of Stanislav Ivanovsky <laughs> now. He here's is, he is, Tina. I missed an hey, opportunity Tina, with him. Tina, though. back to the episode. Okay, back to the second. episode. They cut out most of his scenes. <laughs> Almost just, all of his yeah. dialogue. They I have missed a problems big opportunity with him, him because of how different he is in the book. And I picture him being like so much different. Yes. He's just like an awkward, like, he, not really nerd, but like you, like he's an athlete, but like he's an awkward person. He's antisocial. He's an introvert. 
you know. Yeah, I would almost give him like a like a young Adam Driver type of energy, mm, but like not yeah. like the call, not not like cool Adam Driver from a uh, Black Landsman, but like like Kylo Ren Adam. Yeah, Driver. no, I can <laughs> see like, that. Fully. I don't feel normal. I am seventeen, and it's terrible. I'm like Adam Driver from the zombie movie. <laughs> Carrie, to your point too, because they cut so many of the scenes with him mm-hmm. out, it came like it really kind of. It's already a kind of a fucked up relationship, yeah. but it even more so fucks up the relationship with Hermione because all we ever see is like four scenes of him, and then at the end he's like, "I will you please write to me over this," and she's like, "Nah, dude." And I they filmed really. the scenes. They did yeah. film yeah, they them. They just them cut them all. You could have built up that connection because, exactly. like, in later on in the books, actor. like. Have you all well, seen those scenes? What if he was a really bad actor? I don't know. Then you re- are they film them or are they in the deleted <laughs> scenes? I can't remember. I don't know. I don't recall they're in the deleted scenes, but he did have more scenes because he talked about how they cut tons of like a couple of scenes where they were interacting. He and mm-hmm. Hermione. They were needed two yeah. movies. We we just keep coming back to they needed. That's two the movies. thesis yeah. of this episode, I think, because they needed two yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah. But they just made him a himbo in the movies, and I'm like, he's basically, not even a himbo though, like. But, like, they don't even give him enough of a personality to, like, be the bow part. Like, he's yeah, just he, a he's just him. him. <laughs> this, this is a I man understand. right here. <laughs> instead of going, like, mysterious, they just went, like, brooding. Yeah. With him, right? Yeah. So instead of being, like, a mysterious, soft-spoken okay. man of hard-cut features, he just turns into, like, hello, Hermie, I go over here. Like, oh, and we don't get the cute little name thing. Aren't, aren't, Hermione. Aren't Seekers, Hermione. Aren't Seekers supposed to be like small people? Like like yes. skinny yes. small people yes, that they can are. fly really he fast? He definitely has the physique of a beater. Yeah. He'll yeah. Beat that ass. He really does. But they do that with all the characters. If you look at the yeah. other characters that are in the competition, Harry's the only one who has any definition because he's obviously the lead character in the whole series yeah i definitely have problems with flair's character in the book and then the movie makes it like so much worse and then you're right that harry gets 100 percent of the characterization mm-hmm. he gets in the movie in the book but it's like not any characterization <laughs> fine in the book there's a lot of time where harry is just watching things happen around him but it's like a little funny to watch daniel radcliffe do it in the movies because mm-hmm. he'll be in a scene just like tennis matching that he's like what okay and okay, okay, great. Thank you so much for the spot. Thank you. <laughs> this is also a unique movie because this is right when Radcliffe is on the cusp of like really getting it, right? Mm, like he's yeah. good at what he does, but this is where like he knows who Harry is, but this is where he really like kind of the next movie is the one that he really looks good as an actor, in my opinion. Which is this interesting because still... he starts drinking around the next book, I think. Oh, yeah, we need Ooh, to talk yeah. about that. He's an alcoholic. But, um, <laughs> yeah. But he, uh, it's funny because, like, you can kind of see a lot of the movies he'll try and, like, do things that are obviously a young actor trying to act. But that's it, is that he's trying to act versus, like, you know, acting and just being natural. I would like to move to the next phase of our conversation. Uh, yes. We're going to rank the boy's hair in this <laughs> Okay, I was, I was like, I hope that's what this is leading to because we need to see the images. Do you think we should rank them one through seven? Or do you think we should give them each a one through ten rating? I think we should do tiers. Tiers? Tiers. Oh, oh okay. Okay. So we'll we'll find the... Okay. Yeah. So let's start with this. Um, because we're doing tiers, we're going to start with Draco. And I'm showing images to everyone who's recording right now. But y'all have seen the movies. Like, I'm not showing anything special. Here's Draco's fucking face with his fucking Goblet of Fire haircut. And then we also have Neville. So Draco, <laughs> Draco's hair is always a little bit different. Draco, a, Draco's hair is like um, combed over to the side. I think this but is Neville, his best hair. Neville is doing this thing in this movie that most of the rest of the boys are mm. doing in this movie where I'm calling it like the teen mullet. It is. Where it's like, it's not a mullet on purpose, but it's just so long that like the back of the neck hair is doing its own thing thing much like a mullet see with neville i think at this point they're trying to make him look unattractive because he's starting to start looking better than his character is supposed to look yeah it's true this i think this is the last movie where he wore the prosthetic teeth Mm -hmm. and i think Um, and then he got embarrassed and was like they think i'm ugly because he lost all the weight he was chubby and now he's not um you Mm. christina you know i i like basically have their hair right like the 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 (laughs) shitty hairstyle they have in this movie like I mean, my bangs are a little bit long, but like it's it's 
It's there. Charlie, when you... Like, something about being 14 years old, when you have this kind of hairdo, it just, like, screams neglect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, that's, like, that's I what cannot be bothered right to get a haircut. But, like, your hair looks very good and intentional. It's and not. especially right now with your beanie, it's, like, framing your face very nicely. So we're not actually going to hear the self-deprecating I'm just saying, stuff I'm, right now about this, your this hair. This is just me not know. getting a haircut yet. Anyway. I can also <laughs> see from here that you don't have the weird neck thing going on. <laughs> Whose hair is better, Draco, Draco. or yeah. Neville? Draco. Draco's, Draco's okay. hair hasn't changed since Prisoner of Azkaban, but like, yeah. Well, yeah, you're right about that. But in this movie, it looks a little better, I think. I yeah. think the whole yeah, idea bit. with the crappy hair, with some of the crappy hair that you were talking about, the teen mullet, I honestly think that maybe even an attempt to make them look younger because some of these I, that's kids probably true. are maturing a little faster. I think Tom Felton was like 18 when they filmed this movie because oh, yeah. he was a little older than the rest yeah. of them. Okay, so Neville's out. Next, we're going to do... I mean, this one's obvious. We're going to do Fred and George. Whose hair is better? Um, <laughs> neither. Neither. <laughs> they both... You terrible. have to pick. And, like, my that pick... I don't my pick like is this redheads. is Fred. This is Fred. I think it's Fred just because of the angle. Yeah. Though. I think one of the actors was a better actor than the other twin and fred in the books has a little bit more of a personality than george does and so i think they made the slightly better actor fred and so Oof. george just looks like <laughs> one of the weasley twins but fred to me looks like fred that's because fred's the flirty one yeah well and in this one george looks like if you put a beetle into hogwarts oh yeah. my god <laughs> like, it looks like if you took the Beatles haircut and put it on a wizard, it was like, well, all right. Like, that's... Right, that's Fred, what... Fred in this has some flip to it. Right, right. It looks working. stylized. And the yeah. picture of George also, he, he kind of almost... You can tell his hair is not naturally red. It, it, the way it looks yeah. here, it just doesn't even look natural. It, looks oh, it almost looks I think blonde. It, I think it is naturally no, red. No, it's not. They have brown hair. They have brown hair. Um, yeah. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about. So Fred <laughs> wins that one. <laughs> Um, next, we have Cedric Diggory, who doesn't quite have the mullet thing, but it's extremely big hair anyway. His hair is so big because it's full of secrets. It is. Versus the, the Ron Weasley. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cedric <laughs> wins, hands down. Um. And I did, this is, I'm so sorry, a picture of Ron from the Yule Ball. So there's not much going for him in this picture He in looks general. so Nothing. angry. I'm sorry. This is like me whenever people force me to do things. That That's the exact <laughs> thing. That's it. This is when Ron is all jealous. Yeah, you this know is when Ron is all face. jealous. I'm going to admit it. Yes, it is. Yeah, he's he's pure jealousy right now. So does anyone oppose Cedric winning against Ron? No, I think Cedric wins overall so far. Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to do Harry. Just he loses. No matter who <laughs> he's, he's going. Done. Harry has the Just worst Harry. eliminate Harry and it's, move it's on. It's kind there, of terrible. Yeah. It's a Harry, helmet. It's Look, like... Go back Harry to look how Fred. far it goes out on the side. It looks like a yeah, wig. Like, how far he still Harry's has like... the bangs, and yet he also has like a bunch on the bottom. How does he? Ha how? It looks like a wig, a bad wig. It's not. It's his hair. <laughs> it looks like a bad wig. Sorry. <laughs> it's definitely his hair. I'm googling it. What is this? Is what are you looking at? No, I'm trying to see if he was wearing a wig. Um, wigs. Seeming, it was just seemingly, though. Mm -mm, seemingly is not quite. That's not, not quite exactly uh, the word that we're looking for. Um, screen he rant the fire says. Haircut. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's real. I, it's definitely because real. Because Ripper Grin in this screen rant article is like, yikes, I shouldn't have had that hair. Not, I shouldn't have put on a wig yeah. in that style. Yeah. So Harry loses against Fred. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Harry okay. loses Harry, against everyone. Harry is the worst. Okay. Let's do Cedric versus Draco hair. Cedric's, Cedric's is kind of like tall, but Cedric. not very specifically styled. Cedric has what I call like the messy Tan France hair. It's high, but it's not as nearly as coiffed as Tan France. But then Draco has this. His mom taught him how to part his hair neatly and comb <laughs> it over when he was seven. And he's never changed it since, except when he experimented with the slicked back look in Chamber of the, Secrets. When he, he looked like Dracula. Mm -hmm. They're hiding his receding hairline. Oh, yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> um, Cedric so, wins. So are we... Ced yes. Oh, this, okay, Cedric beats Draco? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, so now it's, it's Fred Cedric. Weasley 
versus Cedric. Cedric. Cedric has the best Cedric. hair in this movie out of all the boys. That's okay because he has terrible hair in other movies. Well, you didn't have Crumb in there, but that's because he has really shit hair. You didn't have Voldemort in there, so... Uh... Uh, no hair. At Cedric Diggory's funeral, the, a representative from the restricted section is going to run in and <laughs> posthumously award him this award for oh best hair in the films. Well done, Cedric Diggory. I, I'm going to need to stop for a second. Tina, did you just say posthumously? Is that right? <laughs> posthumously. Right, okay. Just, just make sure there. Oh, is it posthumously? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> Posthumously. <laughs> Only Man. in the English-speaking countries. Don't worry. I just had a traumatic war flashback to that one time I said that I really liked Kanoa, and my friend Courtney was like, what the fuck is Kanoa? 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 Do you mean Kinoa, you dumb idiot? And I'll never forget it. I was trying to be gentler than that, but... <laughs> well, and, like, because I honestly didn't know if you were saying it wrong or if you were, no. like, going for, like, the Riva type... It's because like, I'm going to say it it's slightly so, off. It's posthumous. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Okay, so, hey, guys, we actually haven't started the school year yet. No, we haven't. Um, <laughs> we have in our souls. So, because we don't have Ludo Bagman, we're using Karkarov as our red herring and, like, not in a cute way, in, like, a dumb okay. way where he's like, I'm going to be evil now. But he's not. <laughs> okay, evil, so he, evil. Here's the debate about Karkaroff with the whole putting the name in the goblet. Was that mm-hmm. Karkaroff being imperial? Or was oh. that or was that Barty Crouch sipping the tonic? I think it's an Imperio. Oh. Imperio and or polyjuice are both great it's explanations it's, for that. It's definitely Wait. not actually Karkaroff. Like like doing it like and we're talking movie only, yeah, right? Yeah, because this didn't happen okay. in the book. Because when you see him sneak into the goblet, and then we see that Harry's name is put in, you assume he did Andrew, it. do you not know uh, what we're talking about? No, I don't. There's this one split second scene where Karkaroff sneaks into the Goblet of Fire room and is like, <laughs> and like shuts the doors. And that's it. Really? As if he's going to be evil inside. Oh, but we don't actually see him physically. No, no but it's like, obviously it's saying. Well, and then Harry's name comes out surprisingly. So yeah. I yeah. I always, I think he was Imperio to do it. Okay, because I he's like a Death Eater, and you know it makes it. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I like as, that idea. as a kid, I always thought it was Polyjuice, just because it was like everything's Polyjuice. It's Moody, like it's not Moody, but like you know, it's it's Barty Crouch. It's always Polyjuice. But then he'd have to let the Polyjuice wear off, and then not be seen. Like I don't know. I think huh. it would be easier. Can you take Polyjuice when you are on Polyjuice? That is a good question. <laughs> would you want to? It's so gross. Well, but e- either way, though, I don't think it would actually be Karkarov because he would know that he was that he had had the Imperious curse cast on. Him. Oh no, hmm. we know that there's a, cur- a curse that you can do where you make people forget. Also, yeah, oh, shit. <laughs> these are all good theories, and we'll never know the answer because yeah. it was a movie. How about we all just agree it? it was a very dumb element to put in there for no reason? Yeah, it's definitely better in the books when Harry is like, "I have evidence to suspect you," but like we don't get that evidence until like the well, end yeah. and it also takes away from the eventual self-aggrandizing that we learned that when moody was sitting there saying it would have taken a very powerful dark wizard to oh yeah like alter- the best it's really- wizard of all like, time. yeah it's like it's really just barty crouch jr being like yeah my dick's big enough to do that but yours <laughs> isn't what of it you know that's that's essentially what's going on. <laughs> so there, Harry Potter, every Harry Potter movie does a lot of this like scene collapsing where it takes like six different scenes. And it's like, what if these were all the same scene? So it's like, mm-hmm. it's like we're in class and then we're in the Forbidden Forest and then we're in detention. And it's like, whoa, how does your schedule work? This doesn't make any sense. So like in the Goblet of Fire, what they did is it's like, what if every single character that we've ever cared about puts their name into the Goblet of Fire in a five minute window? Yeah. yeah. And, um, and like while everyone's watching, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so like everyone comes in, um, the Weasley twins do their thing and they get like olded. Yeah. And then we all I cry. That. Cause that's the only time we, um, they ever see each other. Okay, grow all right. No, I don't, I don't allow no. it. No, no, stop so, it. And then like, an- <laughs> like, it's just, I won't a- let them poison your another, ears. Listeners. <laughs> another thing that happens is like, it makes this scene so like tonally weird because it's like Cedric puts his name in. Woohoo! Yaha! School pride, and then it's like the twins come and they do their their age potion, and it doesn't work, and they get beards, and it's like, haha, that's really funny, and like their laughter and the shenanigans music like fades out really hard to be like, and now the man is here. Oh God, the Victor look. Crumb just throbbing testosterone <laughs> in a body, a hunk of meat, 
And he's like, this one's for you, Hermione, whom I don't know. They just like eye each other. And it's like, what? What is happening here? What is that? I don't believe that in this moment, Victor Crumb would be like, this girl's the girl. But I have been in a situation before where I was being eye contacted by someone that I felt was attractive. And I was like, there's a lot of meaning in this eye contact. Hmm. Hmm. And? So if happen. Crumb had looked at me the way that Crumb looked at Hermione in this scene, I would have fallen in love in that moment. Oh my but God. I don't buy that Crumb would have done that. You get me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Can't blame Hermione for just being being a straight woman who loves big, beefy boys. See, I'm thinking the reason why he's attracted to her is because unlike everybody else who would fall all over themselves for him, she's like aloof. She couldn't care. She doesn't. Yeah, she she mean, she less. likes a good looking guy, but she's not like, oh, I'm going to fawn all over she's him. She's not like and other I think girls. That's his attraction to her. <laughs> <laughs> it's especially hard for me in, because like, I think like this is one of her most obnoxious scenes of all the obnoxious stuff she does in the movie. This it's not going to work yeah. is like the most yeah. annoying thing I've ever heard anyone do in my life. And they're like, oh, let's talk to her about it. But I would be like, shut the fuck up, Hermione. <laughs> like, I can't. Well, the whole scene is almost shot like a musical. Because she's like, it's not going to work. And then she like randomly moves like four feet away and they follow her and they're like, well, what do you mean it's not going to work? She's like, bah, bah, bah. yeah. That's a really good note, Andrew. There's a lot of really weird blocking in this movie. Yeah. And this is something that I run into in books because you also, blocking is like where your characters are mm-hmm. in a scene. Yes. And it really matters in stage plays and movies because you're really getting a visual. But it's also something that's important in like books and stuff too. Like, where are your characters in your scene? And this is something that I run into a lot with writers is it's like, if you have 10 people in your scene, the blocking is fucking messy. Because if you have 10 characters, not everyone can be in a specific place, like, on purpose. So I think that's what's happening throughout this movie is there's, like, too much going on. And sometimes the blocking is just, like, go wherever your heart tells you to go. Yeah. (laughs) Have fun with it. Just choose scenery a bit, you know? Just see what you can do. Yeah. So... There's also that scene um, on the bridge where Hermione is like, I'm worried about you, Harry. Walk six feet to look at him from a different angle. I've been worried about you. Whatever. Yeah. She says I'm scared for you. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. We'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to the champion selection. It's not Halloween like it is in the book. It's just a day. We don't get Halloween. Maybe it is and it's Halloween. Not even a real... it, there's no decoration. Uh, yeah. It, it's not even a real champion selection. It's a... Uh, this one school has multiple people to choose from, but these two schools oh, just went ahead each. and yeah, which in the book is completely opposite because Floor is like they're all surprised. They're like, "Wait, she got it," yeah. you know. And yet in this, it's like, "Well, of course, Floor de la Cor is going to be the baton representative." Well, it was kind of like they were handpicked, which right. is yeah. is wrong. They should have. They. Should, I would have liked to see that scene where they show people throwing it in. Show lots of people throwing it in. At least then it would mm-hmm. be more interesting of the scene. Yeah. And just like cutting to one of the each the ones who actually get it. And then so I'm just I'm not going to stop talking about how the gendering of the two yeah. schools is dangerous. And like one one more thing um, that makes that such a terrible decision is it's like, wow, Fleur Delacour is the best of the girls. Yeah. Whereas like in the book, it's like she's just the best in her school yeah, because exactly. she's the best. Yeah. But it's like it's like, wow, well, if there's girls, then obviously like some dumb, pretty girl is going to be the best of them because they're all dumb, pretty girls. And her note that says her name that comes out of the goblet is a fucking doily, dude. Yeah. All, yeah. all the boys get these like singed, like pirate map style yeah. like pieces of paper. And then Fleur's is like a doily with like basically like ribbons coming out it's of it. Like weird. it's like the most annoying thing. Um. The goblet knows that girls like pretty things. <laughs> Boys like pretty things. A lot of people can like pretty things. Yeah, they no. can. No. Uh, no. Um, no. I really That's enjoy the, the bleachers at Hogwarts in this movie. Like, for some reason, it's just like, mm-hmm. we needed more seats um, in the Great Hall. So let's just add some bleachers randomly. <laughs> well, you can. So why not? This does lead um, to one of my favorite gifts. One of my favorite gifts. So it. Harry, they're all like, ooh, who's going to come up? And then it's like Harry's name gets called and Harry sits back down again. And there's a gif of him sitting down slowly and it's just like, oh, shit, 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 shit. <laughs> and to me, that's like one of my favorite gifts. It says so much, you know? It's like we all really get that yeah. feeling. Oh, yeah. shit, 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 shit. Mm-hmm. Tina, you just made me realize something, which is that it's very huh. ironic, too, that they would go ahead and gender the schools like that 
when you consider that bitch's personal opinion on when men compete with women or when women Dude, compete I with know. Men. Obviously, like, hey, well, Andrew, it's... why do you think Fleur lost? Uh, she came yeah. in the last get last. She didn't get anywhere in yeah. this competition. You know why? Because women suck. Oh, man. God, why, okay, why do we even? It's like it's like Durmstrang and Hogwarts just look at each other every four years, like why do we even invite them? We should have them come and do the concession stand. That would be a good idea. Because mom says we have to invite them to play with us. God. <laughs> mom being the Ministry of Magic, mom. Ah! So we were just talking about names coming out of the Goblet of Fire. Okay, and then, so what do y'all think is next on my list of... Notes? Heritage, what's your name of the Goblet uh, of Fire? Dumbledore's going bananas? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Dumbledore loses Obviously, his shit. We, we, don't, we don't have to talk about it. Calmly. We can just very calmly talk about it. We can it calmly talk about it. We can calmly just ignore it. We, we can. Let's, let's calmly ignore it and move on, shall okay. we? That sounds great. Really cute how uh, Richard Harris... Is it Richard Harris? No, yes. he's gone. No, 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 no. It's Michael, Ga- it's Michael yeah. Gambon. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Real cute how Michael Gambon was like, I'm not going to read the books hmm. because I want my performance to be unique or whatever bullshit yeah. he said. And then he grossly misunderstood the character. So that was just exactly. like a real fun thing that he yeah. did. This Old white men always make like great decisions. Dumbledore. Like... I like him as Dumbledore, but if he had read the source material, I think he could have done it a lot better. Yeah, exactly. Or if you just had someone... Explain the source balls material. On set to be Explain like, the character hey, to no. him. No, it clearly says in the text, calmly, whatever. Yeah. We're, we're going to calmly we skip over move, it. Move swiftly on. Yes. I just really would love to see what these movies would look like if Richard Harris hadn't passed away. Mm-hmm. My problem is, I think by the time we got to the sixth movie, when they were doing all that stuff in the cave, I don't think Richard Harris was like physically strong enough to execute it, it, those that's scenes. Why, it would have been a lot of CGI. No, no. Away. What you do is you have any action scene, just have uh, Michael Gambon do that, and then everything else have. Oh, Richard- he's the stunt double. Yes. Yeah. He's the stunt <laughs> double. <laughs> okay. Stunt double no, doesn't need like to no. Read. Don't even like the way. Don't even like have him be the stunt double. Just change the actor. Just like do it. Don't make him but have to look scene, like him. Yeah. Just. <laughs> well, that's what they did, basically. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing I like about Richard Harris is I like the way he played Dumbledore in the first two movies. He definitely yeah. got the demeanor yeah. right, but there was this like, there's this like strengthening that happens to this character when he goes out into the world and tries to get real life. Like, um, okay, not that this scene was in this movie, but. When Fudge and Dumbledore at the end of this book are going back and forth and Fudge is like, I'm going to stick my head into the sand. And Dumbledore is like, you're a fucking idiot. I don't think Richard Harris could have done a scene no. like that. Or it would have been absolutely amazing. It would have been a very soft spoken, but powerful, <laughs> like, I believe that well, the decisions you make And we'll never will... know. <laughs> yeah. We'll never know. But he was younger. He certainly yeah. could have. At his end, maybe not. So, so now... We're fighting. Mm-hmm. Yes. Harry and Ron are fighting yeah, now they're... because because of Ron is... Harry put his name into the Goblet of Fire. Because Ron is always jealous of Harry. Sadly, yes. they're best and... friends and he's always jealous yeah. of Harry. I really love that in this movie, Harry and Ron are fighting in the dorm. And for a couple minutes, I was like, are the other boys here? And then the camera angle moves and it's like, yes, yes, they are. The <laughs> other again. boys are for sure there. But they don't do Walking. anything. But it doesn't matter. Like, I love that. Th- they're just sitting there being like, oh, they're making eye contact with each other. Like, are you fucking listening to this? And Harry and Ron are just like, well, I just thought we were best friends. And I thought you would tell me. And like, I don't know what happened last night. And I don't know why. Wink, 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 wink. <laughs> um, I just love that. I promise that, you it would never happen. I love that Seamus and Dean and Neville are just like, fucking yikes. Am I right? It's a love <laughs> Guys, what do they do when we go to sleep? <laughs> wow the last couple i ship in this entire series is ron and harry <laughs> it would just be gross <laughs> on so many levels so yeah, then it, like this... just two gross boys yeah just, i mean no one makes a first move in that scenario no <laughs> <laughs> so that le- their fight leads us to the stupid ass like back and forth with ron harry and hermione that i don't I'm think is a good owl. character moment for hermione i'm not an owl but like she is an owl for ron but not for harry Oh, I can't. I, it just doesn't make sense that that scene even happens. No, I just yeah. don't see the character of Hermione doing that in the first place. I love, yeah, exactly. I love Neville yeah. just chilling in the lake. That that was great. Yeah, that, that's having the time of his life. <laughs> that's yeah. all I wanted. Because <laughs> there's no Snape around, so he can do what he wants. Well, yeah, 
Neville is a mood right there. He's just like, Harry, I'm having the time of my life. Look, it's a plant. <laughs> just Love like, that boy. you go, Neville. Yeah. Yeah, so how do we feel about Dobby being replaced with Neville, pretty much? Um, it's a very cost-effective solution. Okay, I, I only have, like, I have opinions only because, like, having Dobby only appear in, like, the second movie and, like, the second to last movie, it's like... Why do we care about his death? I mean, I I cared about his death because I read the books. But like, right. Why do the people in the movies care about this character who showed up for like 5 minutes? Because he's cute. Yeah, <laughs> he's cute. Because it was like the fucking finale to a movie. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, let's put all of the music and scenery, let's put everything into this. It was fucking yeah. depressing. No. But totally it's like, dramatic. I want to dig him a grave. But it's like you got to have him show up like once or twice, like maybe I don't know. Yeah, just just yeah. have him appear in more of the know, movies. Man. Like just just even in the background, just be like, "Hi, Harry. Hi, Dobby," and that's it. <laughs> he needs more characterization. He really does. And again, this is one of the foul. You know, the problems with trying to turn a book into a movie. You cut stuff out, and you cut stuff that's important out. I mean, we have a yeah. whole character that's completely missing from all the book, all the movies. Where's Peas? Well, and it sucks, too, because what it ends up doing to Neville is that it codes him as incredibly dumb. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the only way that they know how to make this work with Neville instead of Dobby is to make Neville the useful fool. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like, I'm going to give Neville this book and just know that this idiot's going to have to talk about his verbs. It it would be like someone's plan to get a message to Christina would be to hide it in a K-pop album and give it to me. Like, Surely he will have. We just know he's going to well, talk um, about it, Andrew- so it'll work. <laughs> Wait, Andrew, remember that one time that you sent me? <laughs> it was right after the slap at the Academy Awards, and you sent me an article that was like, "Will Smith has been arrested after slap at the Academy Awards," <laughs> and, and I was like, "Oh wow, that's crazy." And Andrew was like, "Yeah, the interior contents of this article are mind blowing." And then I clicked on it, and it was. It, a it giant was, schlong. It was a giant <laughs> penis. Just a giant. A, a, and I was like, damn it, you called my bluff. I don't open your links. <laughs> I think I said something like, I can't believe that he almost, or that like they. Like the uh, police showed up at his house or something. Yeah, or that like they pulled a gun on him when they were arresting yeah, him or something yeah. like that. And you were like, oh, and there was like a pause, a pause. <laughs> God damn it, Andrew. <laughs> I basically got Rick rolled, but with a. Giant penis. Okay, speaking of giant penises, dragons. No, they're all nesting mothers. Speaking of giant penises, Charlie Weasley is not in this movie. He's not no, in this he's movie. not in the movie. He's the one who brought the dragons. Oops. R.I.P. Charlie Weasley. I'm right here. Yeah. That takes us into our first task with the dragon. Um, breaking its chains, lots of collateral damage happening to the school. Yeah. They, I don't have any complaints happens. about this. They really they really movied it up a lot, but like yeah. you know, they're going to. Yeah, it's fine. Just yeah. I think it's a little annoying that Harry's like, oh, no, I'm falling. If only I had my wand still on my person. Okay. <laughs> like, at least in the book, that was the only task that you could watch. But, like, in the movie, it's like, well, I guess you can't even watch Harry fight a dragon. Because, oh, like, he wasn't there. Yeah. Because he right. wasn't even right Do you there. know how much that would cost to film a whole scene of him fighting a dragon? <laughs> exactly. Except they did film it. Well, they but they filmed Harry doing things separate from the dragon. That's like the thing. Harry's yeah. doing something and the dragon's doing something else. CGI. Yeah. Any other notes about the first task? Um, well, we didn't get to see Cedric make a dog and then have that dog like be eaten by a dragon. Right. Um, but we also don't get to see it in the books. Yeah, but I'm just saying like that that's that, that's a that's a Cedric character moment. That's why we don't see yeah. anybody else fight the dragon except for Harry. That's why I don't feel bad about him dying because he made a dog and then had a dragon eat it. So he killed a dog. But it was a fake dog. No, he gave it life. He gave it life. <laughs> and that gets into some messy transfiguration. Yeah. <laughs> Who gives life terror? So we have an egg now. What does it okay. do? Scream. So it is time to move on to my favorite portion of this. The Yule Ball. <laughs> oh. <laughs> When Hermione takes off her paint-covered overalls and glasses and takes her hair out of a <laughs> ponytail. looks like a fashion model. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, and Ron wears a tailbone. We buff. start with the super awkward Ron and McGonagall dance lesson, and, like... It, I, a I, lordly as a babbling, bumbling <laughs> band of baboons. I think that is inappropriate as a teacher to be like, take my waist. Yeah. 
Yeah. I just can't see the character actually doing that, considering the age and all of that. It just wouldn't happen. I, I like I like her just yeah. calling him out and being like, "I'm not taking your bullshit. I'm gonna embarrass you." Mm-hmm. That is that is kind of a McGonagall move, though. I do like the well, fact the... that the only one who knows how to dance is Neville, even though yes. he doesn't in the I, book. He's well, like, he does in the, in the, mo- in the movie. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't in like, the book. I think it's interesting how in the book it's like, oh, he's just a bumbling fool. But in the movie it's like, oh no, he like took dance classes. Like, like that's one of his passions. And it makes him even more of a nerd for it. Passion. I don't know. Well, he was raised by his yeah. grandmother. so Of I course she would happen. make him take dance classes. Of course. Alice yeah. Longbottom knows how to teach you Augusta. to be able to enjoy a night of well monitored. Yeah, it's well Augusta. Alice is the mom. You know, his grandmother might have raised him. His grandmother might have raised him, but at least she lets him wear real clothes to the Yule Ball. Yeah. Oh my what god. What the fuck was Ron wearing? He's okay. wearing like a tablecloth mixed with a Imagine curtains. Imagine Neville in like a vulture like hat to the Yule Ball. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Chef's kiss. <laughs> so so in the book we spend a lot of time Well, first of all, in the book, McGonagall is like, you will need a date for this formal event. In the movie, it's like, there's a ball, and Harry and Ron are like, oh, God, we need dates, which is, like, not a thing that 14-year-olds actually believe they need, in my experience. Mm. I went to a lot of dances without a date. Um, And then the book spends a lot of time trying to get, like, with Harry trying to get Cho alone. But the movie's just like, what if they were both just outside for no reason Uh at the same time alone? It's fine. (gasps) So he asked Cho. Cho says no. No, 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 said Cho. (laughs) And then Harry finds out that both people he had crushes on went together. And Ron finds out the same exact thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so then um, finally, I don't even think they show Harry asking Parvati. It's just like, hi, Harry. Yeah. And Harry goes like running well, after they had, them. Like, well, it's like It's like three scenes in a row mm-hmm. that like the twins hi, walk by. Yeah. Well, they always walk by Harry and Ron, and they always both say, hi, Harry, which is Boy, just Harry. fantastic. Either one of them would go with him. It doesn't yeah. matter. They're interchangeable. Well, and the so reason so. Parvati gets to go with Harry in the book is because she is a Gryffindor. And Padma is a Ravenclaw. And Padma is a Ravenclaw, mm-hmm. but in the movie, Padma also gets to be a Gryffindor suddenly. It doesn't matter. If you're <laughs> twins, you're in the same fucking house. Twins equals Gryffindors. <laughs> She got really brave when she figured out that uh, she could go with Harry Potter uh, potentially. <laughs> it didn't work out, but she got real brave about it. You had to be really brave to go with Ron in that outfit. Yeah. Really <laughs> fucking brave. I'm sorry. <laughs> so in the book, way at the beginning when McGonagall's like, hey, Harry, you will need a date. And you together with your date, you will need to open the ball. In the movie, it's like five minutes before the ball. And McGonagall's like, dude, you're opening the ball and harry's like yeah. what does that mean i've never read pride and prejudice and she's like you're opening the fucking ball what do you want mcgonagall you you <laughs> fail at your job this one time how dare you they needed to give her fucking lines in this movie dude and they didn't pick good ones yeah. so then we get hermione's stupid fucking reveal oh god she's been hot all along what? No, 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 it's, no, no. it's 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 fine also, her yeah, dress in the movies, the they book. made her hair better from the very beginning. Only the first book did her hair look like shit. Half no, 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 no. The two. second one is really yeah. bad, too. Yeah, I guess. Same director. Okay, the first, Sorcerer's Stone hair is pretty bad, but it's the Chamber of Secrets hair where you can see that pieces have been crimped and other pieces have not. <laughs> oh. Well, and in the third, the third movie has the scene where she punches Draco, which, like, that outfit of, like, the hoodie, that was the first time as a young child that I was like, oh. Hello, Emma. Hello, Emma. I was going to say, her, all of a sudden Same. she looks Same. attractive there. She's not supposed to look attractive at all until the ball. Right. That's when until she makes ball, her big yeah. transformation. This yeah. is right. And because we skipped the whole thing with Snape and the terrible teeth. We didn't need that thing. scene. We, we don't need Alan Rickman making fun of a child. I think. But here's the thing. He does. Here's the thing. There's a re- yeah, we do actually need it because there's a reason that there's a generation of people who are willing to defend exactly. Snape. <laughs> None of them are on this call. Um, and it's because of Alan Rickman and it's because of them taking away all of the bullshit that Snape does pretty much for the rest of the series. Exactly. They give him like an adorable study hall just like adorable little student abuse. Scene oh my in this god. Movie, but they don't, I love it though. They don't give him like a so we don't get the 
terrible teeth scene where Hermione's teeth are going past her clavicle. And he says, I see no difference to a, a 14 year old girl who is obviously not cries. like a cool girl with ton, tons of self-confidence. Yeah. And then the other thing is that um, in the book, uh, Snape, reads one of Rita Skeeter's love articles about Harry aloud to the class and pauses for laughter. So those I think are two crucial Snape characterization moments that we don't get from the movies. Because he doesn't need a characterization. There's, there's too much going on in this movie. Yes, I know, exactly. but he's just like standing around. But it goes around to Snape because I mean, let's face it, the reason why Snape does all this is because he hates the way he was treated when he was a kid and I think that his characterization needs a little bit more of that. It really does. But I also am a lover of Alan Rickman and anything of he course. does. Of course. Yeah. Please check out, um if you haven't already, around last Christmas on the Movie Night crew, we did Alan Rickmas and it was great. We did um, we did Sorcerer's Stone because we uh, had not yet covered that on the pod. We did Dogma. Um, love Actually. Love Actually. And what's the last one? Uh, Die Hard? Uh, Die hard. Die hard. Oh my God. Die hard. What a great lineup. We're still at the old ball. Shout out to Parvati for being like, Harry, take my fucking Fucking waist. Shout out to Daniel Radcliffe (laughs) for being like, Hey, um, I shouldn't have take all these dance classes because I'm supposed to be really bad at this dance. So everyone else took like (laughs) way more dance classes and he took like a couple days of them. That's very funny. And it shows. Yeah, exactly. And I love that. He's not supposed to know how to dance. So it's okay. It works. That's very funny. Fleur Delacour, one of our heroes, apparently went to the ball with some guy because it's they don't know who that Davies? is, and he's not even he's not even cute. Fleur, Neville and Ginny go to the ball together, and Ginny's dress is literally so tacky okay, and cute. Okay. I love it so First much. First time I saw this movie, that ruined my ship because I Chamber of Secrets. I was already shipping like Harry and Ginny. I was like, oh, they're gonna end up together, and like Hermione and Ron are gonna end up together. It's perfect. It's yeah. great. And then I'm like. Neville and Ginny? No! My ship! Shit! It's okay. I love the outfit, okay. though. It kind of reminds me of a... The outfit's great. It, it reminds me of an outfit that's, like, one of the dolls that I like. It's a Japanese Ooh. version of a Barbie. They call her Jenny. And she has outfits mm-hmm. like that that are just kind of, like, a little frilly and high cut. You know, it's just... I love Cute. the outfit. I just love the outfit. I think it's adorable. It makes her look young and sweet, even though we know she dates every guy in the dorm. <laughs> every guy in the dorm she dates but Harry until she dates Harry. Those are like sherbet colors, mm-hmm. and I love that for her. Any last words about the Yule Ball? We do have to kind of maybe like go faster, even though I'm loving every moment of this. I want to say one thing we miss we miss from the book to the movie. I mean, you get a little bit of the movie, the romance, the the budding romance of the Yule Ball that's sideline to the whole story, and that would be Madame Maxime. Yep. Yes, yeah, I love Maxime that. and Hagrid. I love that their relationship. And here, okay. Just like I, another thing that flattening movies is dangerous, like flattening movies from books is like dangerous. And like, here's an example is like Hagrid and Madame Maxime are both half giants and that's not explored in the movie. It's a given. Mm-hmm. And something else that is a given is that because they are both half giants, they are inherently in love with each yep. other. And that's like really upsetting. I don't like think it belongs with like, never yeah, I, I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's very reductionistic of me to be like, oh, yeah, like the two black characters obviously fall in love, uh, you know, like something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like from something like this. I think it weakens their relationship that they don't get into a fight here at the Yule Ball, frankly. Yeah. Also, yeah. Dumbledore and McGonagall dancing. Um, oh, yeah, oh, that's weird. Cute. Yeah. In the book, it says that. Um, it, in the book, it says that. Oh no, no, no! I'm thinking of when Dumbledore dances with Madame Maxime, and it says that his hat is like scratching the bottom of her chin. Her chin. <laughs> yeah. I looked it up, and the actress that plays Madame Maxime, Frances de la Tour, and she's only five seven for the record. Wow. Well, I was gonna say, um, what's his name? Isn't humongously tall either. Robbie Coltrane. He's not humongously tall either. But it's funny. But Robbie Coltrane is taller than Francis de la Tour. And it's funny that they made Magna Maxime a head taller than Hagrid for some reason. I wonder if that was just easier in terms of the filming. No, it's the gendering of the giants is how they did it. It is not in the books. It is in the books. She's taller than him. No. Her official height is something like 11 feet and his is like 8 feet. No, they're the exact same height. I think that's... Andrew, you're Yeah, I think that's a Harry Potter like fandom.com thing. Yeah, no. The... 
the the books don't don't make her seem like much. I checked on the wikis. Them. Hagrid and Madame Maxine are supposed to be the same exact height. No, I think there's a gendering because they're both half giant going on here, where she has to be like all tall and slim, and then he's like yes, kind of shorter than her and big. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Totally. I used to say when I was younger that I would date a guy who was shorter than me if he was like obviously thicker than me, and and like the one really short guy I did date was was much. Strong, strong, visibly stronger than me. He was like a dense guy. Mm. And that's like a, that's a damaging sort of ideal to promote as well yeah. because you can't just be taller than your, I'm so much bigger than Sean. It's you not are. even funny. Height, width. <laughs> it, nobody gives a shit because, and personality. My personality is gigantic. You have enough personality for both of you. Because I, I also thought there was a line later on that I always remembered it because I thought it was so fucked up where, Hagrid said something to the effect of that the women usually grow larger than the men. But he mm. says, like, the females usually grow larger than the males, talking about giants. Like I said, I, You're like, tripping. That's why That'll probably come up in the next book. Yeah, well, it no, because that's why it's we, like a matriarchal society. I don't know. Like I said, it's been a while. I yeah, we'll, we'll revisit we'll that there. in the next book, um, yeah. because we do have to move on. Um, so... Do, 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 do. Let's talk about the scene where Hermione and... Harry are on a bridge for some reason talking about feelings. I have nothing. I feel like Emma Watson was like, oh, hey, me and Daniel are just going to go over here and like do some improv and practice our <laughs> acting skills. And it like wasn't good, but they kept it anyway. I, OK, I distinctly only really remember this from like trailers. So I feel like I feel like this is a scene that was filmed very dramatically. So it could be in trailers. Ew, I hate I, that's that. That's what I. That's, that's the vibes that. I get from it. Like the I'm scared for okay. you. Like that thing that was in the trailers <laughs> for this movie. Absolutely. So dumb. She's like, let me just move my body like all around. Yeah. <laughs> it was just very weird. But then you know the bath thing, when Cedric walks the by. Thing. Yeah, pretty good. Just take. It's a nice place to take yeah. a bath. It's fine. <sighs> It's a creepy place to take a bath because there's I, an old dead girl in I, there. I could complain girl. about that scene with Harry in the bath for so long. It's creepy because like, she's so old in real life. She's like 40 <laughs> or something at this point. I mean, she's not actually and, like, there he's because a child. it's all I think CGI. the actress is about 30 in this scene, maybe like 35. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, so to me, as an actress that was twice the age of my young counterpart, this would be a really uncomfortable scene to act. Because she is like, ooh, your little child genitals under all these bubbles is, like, what she's doing for the whole scene. <laughs> like, she's technically supposed to be, like, the same age as him, I assume. But, I know. Like, she's and, not. like, the only thing, yeah, it's like she's in Arrested Let's be clear. She's, and that's the only thing that makes this make sense. She's older than I am. I'm just saying. So that's creepy. Okay. You know, at no right. point yeah. in, Yeah. Creepy. It would have been creepy you don't if she look was at twenty. Fourteen year old. I didn't when it so, was out as a movie, and I don't now. No. <laughs> no. I, so let's move swiftly on to the second task. Yeah. yeah, it's mermaids. It's mermaids. So how do we like how the movie portrayed the effects of the gillyweed? Um, where Harry's I'm like choking, choking and then he becomes kind of a mermaid, but not. <laughs> but not. He just has. I guess it's like it says in the books. He has webbed fingers, webbed toes, and but like his feet much. are like very long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the effect. I think because in the way the way it happens, because he had no idea what was going to happen. It's not mm, like yeah. he read the book about Gillyweed. He was just told it would help him breathe underwater, and he takes this thing having no idea what's going to happen. I love. I, the, so I do like the effect. I love the little task uniforms they get in all of them. Like th this moment is yes, when I really noticed it again. I'm like. Oh, wait, instead of, like, just being in clothes and just stripping down, he's, like, in a cute little outfit. I just want to remind everyone that in the book, he is wearing his entire school yeah. uniform cloak included. Yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> and he does not take it off. He takes off his shoes and nothing else. So he has a cute little swimming outfit. Um, I like... I think it would have been funny if they had done it the way they did in the book where Harry takes the gillyweed, starts like passing out, flops himself. And in the in the movie, it's like, here, I'll push you. And it's like very well done. But in the movie, I mean, in the book, it just it feels like a nightmare. It's like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And then he like flops into the water and then just like flops away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do we feel about how the bubble head charm was portrayed? I think it was good. It like. 
it kind of looks like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it, I was going to say there. <laughs> I think it looks kind of useless. <laughs> yeah, I always imagined the bubble being more stationary. Right, mm. like a like a fixed helmet style thing, but in this, it's much more. I like feel like that easy. would be even it harder like to animate, easy. though, because then you can't yeah. have the hair be floating in the water if it's like a just mm-hmm. like a diver helmet yeah. around their head. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I always assumed that there wouldn't be any water inside of it, right? Like if your bubble head head and your whole head's head, in the, the bubble, bubble goes all the way around, and your head is dry, like. And I think I think that the bubble-headed charm as a concept ignores a lot of the other physical ramifications of being under too does. much water. Yeah. So it's like it's like breathing's not the only thing. It's like a whole your whole body system is affected by being yeah. under so much water, but like magic, especially water that cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The shark head is always great. The shark head is always I especially like it at the end when he's like shark shark oops I'm crumb now and he <laughs> thank God before Hermione looks at like him like like she turns and then like he's crumb again it's fine I know she doesn't get to get a good look at him and I feel like for the rest of her life she's like damn I really wish I'd gotten like a good look of Oh I feel like she'd be afraid of him fucking... forevermore be like what you're a shark <laughs> The, the the shark transfiguration is why she ultimately couldn't stay with him because her nightmares are haunted by sharks. <laughs> oh, no, no, geez. it's because he didn't he didn't do it right. She couldn't be with him because he fucked it up and only partially transformed. Oh Come my god! That's true. Okay, okay. You know, yeah. So, so next, what happens is Barty Crouch Senior and is like, "Hey, kid, for plot reasons, take a walk with me." Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I I hate it. I hate Barty Crouch Sr. in this movie. Like, he's so yeah, creepy. he doesn't make any sense because his entire, everything that supports his story is taken away. Yeah. Winky and his wife are pretty much the whole thing. He seems, like, so excited, like, in a creepy way, like, all the time. Yeah. And I don't like it. Yeah. I really hate it. Oh, he's like a he's man a who hits you up on the internet and is like, I'll pay for feet pics. Yeah. <laughs> No nope. mustache screams. I God. pay for feet pics. Yes, God, I hate he's so just a nervous guy. He's just. But he, he's at mess. no point is this character like under the imperious curse yeah. or like doing things against his will. Like he's just an insane person. <laughs> I feel like is the way the movie depicted him. And like yeah. Party Crouch is like young Harry, come with me. Chit chat chat chit chat chat. And then <laughs> Moody walks up and is like, "Hey, motherfucker, uh, <laughs> dumb shit talking." And then he does. His fucking nervous twitch that David Tennant invented. And it's like, okay, so you just walked up to like talk shit and give yourself away, yeah. right? That's well, what it's we fine, did here. He, like, I'm sure your he father kills never him. noticed that twitch in you. He kills him like five minutes later. And yeah. yeah. And then it's like cut cut to Ron, Harry, and Hermione and Hagrid just like dancing through the Forbidden yeah. Forest screaming it's for so some weird. reason. And they're like, oh, look they're a drunk. dead body. They are drunk. Well, they were singing the Hogwarts <laughs> song. <laughs> R.I.P. to like Crumb and Harry's entire interaction where Crumb is like, um, you and Hermione and Harry's like, oh, God, no, we're very platonic. And Crumb's yeah. like, OK, well, you fly really good. And Harry's like, oh, my God, thank you. <laughs> like, it's a beautiful character moments for both a little of them. Little bromance it's, it's, going sorry, on there. Crumb and Harry? Is that the real ship here? A little bromance. Harry, Harry has that moment where he's like, wait, am I into Crumb? <laughs> Like, is that what's going He's on He's into here? Seekers, he, okay? Maybe. He has a thing for Seekers. Being a teenager means you're a little bit in love with everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Also, being Christina me, me, means you're a little also, bit in love Harry with everybody. Also, Harry is very much a flaming I... bisexual. I will stand by this. But lightning. <laughs> Guess who else is? Ron? Yeah. You're, you're and correct. And that's it. <laughs> so, next what happens is Harry goes to Dumbledore's office for dot, 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 a reason? He, he does, no reason. Things. There is he doesn't none. need a reason. <laughs> it's just like, I'm going to go talk to him. Yeah. And then Dumbledore, Fudge, and Moody are like, oh, we got to go. Um, and, and they're like, hey, Harry, can you stay here and like maybe do some plot stuff? And Harry is like, yeah, I got you. Harry, hold down the fort. Eat some and of these some candies plot. that'll okay. bite you back for no apparent reason. Just like, <laughs> why? Oh, so you can bump into the pensive and that's it. Absolutely. That's, that works. That, that was the whole reason. So the whole pensive in the books it's like a three part it's like it's a uh, Karkarov's trial then it's Ludo Bagman's trial and then it's uh, Bellatrix Rodolphus um, Barty Crouch Jr. and a fourth unnamed character's trial but in the movie we just get Karkarov's trial yeah 
So Karkarov is like, I'll name names. Snape, Malfoy, all these other people. And then Karkarov is like... David Tennant. You know, classic Barty <laughs> Crouch. Junior. Junior. Okay, so here's a question. Why is Barty Crouch Jr. physically at this trial? Because his daddy's what? running it. <laughs> what is the answer? <laughs> so he can, like, mess up all those papers. Because he doesn't think he'll get caught. He's so crazy, he doesn't think he's going to get caught. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Seriously. Well, and it's because it's a lot cheaper to do that CGI effect of, like, the pensive action going on. Uh, it's a lot cheaper to do that once. So we're going to combine all the trials, yeah. buddy. We're going to put them all together. I just... I really hate those <laughs> that cage that Karkaroff is in. Like, that... Yeah, it's hmm. cruel and unusual, to say the least. Yeah. I That would be in my nightmares. And... I just think it's crazy that someone who is so psycho as Karkaroff, he looked nuts in that scene, and he did follow Voldemort like the most evil dude ever, is now in charge of a school of kids. And then he ran a school, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's in charge of a bunch not, of kids. Not only is he not in prison, he's educating the youth. Yes. Dumbledore gave him a glowing right. recommendation because <laughs> reasons. It's like, he's not a Death Eater anymore, just like Snape. That this man is a changed man. <laughs> no. And the fact that we don't get all three of those trials means that we don't have to pay Helena Bottom Carter, but we also don't get our introduction yep. to Bellatrix, and we miss what is really our only opportunity to meet her husband. I'm sorry, Rodolphus. they didn't even have her cast yet, did they? I don't remember. Because she doesn't escape till the next movie. Yeah. So we're kind of at the third task now. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Fleur Delacour right now. Yeah. That poor girl who never had a chance. <laughs> because, as I mentioned, the books hate her, but somehow the movies hate her more. Yeah. Like, yeah. they were all she too... She gets nerfed every the time. The movies were all too all too ready to like take the shitty things from the book and make them like so much shittier. And I do think that obviously Voldemort bears a lot of responsibility for that because if you write a character like for example Annabeth Chase, you can't scale that back. She's Annabeth Chase, you know, mm-hmm. that's the deuteragonist from Percy Jackson. The best one. Um, <laughs> but like but like if you write a character like Fleur Delacour, She's kind of nothing and she tends to fail. That's how that's how Voldemort wrote her. And so the movies are like, what if she failed like a fucking idiot? Which sucks because she's supposed to be the best of her school. So if she's the best of her school, yes! her school sucks. No one wants to right? go there. And like as a reminder, her school is all girls. Mm-hmm. So it's like not only do, does the girls' school suck, but the best girl from the girls' school sucks. I, I think what we're seeing is the effect of two poorly executed choices in a row. The right. first one being that I think when... It was originally written, Voldemort's idea was that these are all three super good and competent, but even though they're all competent, this one person, like, these tasks are so hard that even this super competent person fucks up. But then she can't write worth shit, so it's terribly written and you don't get that effect, right? And it just so happens it's the one female character in the Triwizard Tournament. Right. Then the next mistake is that the person who adapts the movie decides to make that character a all girls school. Yeah. Right. So it's like you, what you starts off with a poorly executed because like that's classic Star Trek, right? You have the all the strong people. How do you show how strong the opposition is? One of them who we think is strong falls. Well, you didn't do enough to show that she's special because she's the only one we know of that put her name in the. That is, she has a red thing. shirt that's underneath that yeah. outfit. Yeah, she's wearing the red. What shirt. I would have done. What I would have done, like to to kind of like resolve this this issue. Um, I, what I would have done is made the Hogwarts champion a girl, yep. whether that's, uh, uh, who is it? Angelina Johnson. I would she have would loved for- Angelina. God. So good. Well, then he would have had a person of color doing well. Yeah. You can't do that. Or like, so. not like, um, you know, what would have been really cool. Fucking Cho Chang. So that. Oh God. Yeah. Harry. Well, she's yeah. Still six year she's too, too young. She? Yeah. Make her one year older, you know, yeah. like, and like, then, and then Harry, Harry being into falls. her, or like Harry being into her has oh like God. any foundation. That would be interesting. Like if yeah. she was a year older, it was her and it was Harry. And then he's just like, I can't compete in this because like, it's, I I, I have to, you know, compete against the girl it's that I girl. like. And like, he lets yeah. her win every <laughs> single thing. And then she goes to her death and Voldemort doesn't come back. Whoa. Wow. So yeah, then Harry has a great reason to be super emo for the entire of the next book. (laughs) So Harry goes into the maze and like nothing happens. And I guess he doesn't even break his leg, I guess, which he does in the books. Um, Nothing's in the maze. I still think it was funny that when we watched it during the movie chat, I'm like, there's nothing in the maze. And they're like, what? What are you talking about? There's stuff in there. It's like, (laughs) no, 
No, th- there was nothing the there. The maze is... The maze just makes you crazy. And but the it maze doesn't. keeps it's the changing. Imperius curse. The thing that I wish they had put in... I can go without having the Sphinx scene because that riddle is so dumb that, like, to put it in there is honestly ridiculous. But the thing that I really wish they hadn't taken out was that spell that's like the mist floating in the air mm. that when you take the step on it the so world cool. turns upside down yeah so cool because that is such a great like test for a thing like that where you have to just go through it you know you can go back it's never gonna hurt you but you've got to push through mm-hmm. and that was such a great moment for harry when he was like i can do this and they just take it out it's like nah dude you just walk through the easiest route in the world <laughs> you don't run into shit yeah. right and then Fleur just gets taken out by, like, the wall. I mean, she gets hit by Grum, but, like, then she's just sucked into the wall. It's an angry shrub, okay? The first time we really see Fleur in the maze, she's, like, screaming and crying and running. Yeah. So, like, we don't know what happened to her. We just know that she's fucking Honestly, dumb. that would be me in the maze, though. I'm trying to figure out how a character who's done so poor in the other two tasks managed to get the dragon egg in the first place. We know exactly what happened. <laughs> I know, but in the happen. movie. y'all are playing at? What happened is that she's a woman. And that J.K. Rowling hates women. So yeah, true. <laughs> that's that's exactly yeah. what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, we so Cedric and Harry fight, and then together they take the God port key to that, the graveyard. That, that together, dramatic moment together. when he like turns back at Cedric again. Trailer moment where he like dramatically mm-hmm. looks back at him and then saves him. I just think about that. So Cedric's death, do we think they do it justice in the movies? What what do we like better? Movies, books? Books. Books all the way. I think the movies stretch it out in a way that doesn't make it as creepy. Because like mm-hmm. in the books, and I could Cedric. be off here, but like the way I remember it in the books is that it's real fucking quick. Like they get there and it's like, what are we doing? I don't know. And it's then like you're done. it's like and then Cedric was dead. Yeah, and then Cedric was dead, which like instantly puts you on edge. Whereas yeah. in this one, it's like dramatic and Wormtail approaches, and you pretty Cedric much know what's going like to happen gun. in the movie. Yeah. Kill the spare. I feel like you forget about Cedric in the movie because that's not the primary focus. It's like Voldemort, shit, shit, shit. Yeah, you're not thinking about. I got to get out of here. It's like nope. Yeah. So then, um, the they get started, and Wormtail starts doing this potion to bring Voldemort back to life. Wormtail, as I mentioned, is like, la dee dee da, cut my hand off, and I'm having a great day, and on to the next thing. Boop, and boop, that could like, so in the gruesome. book, he's like, oh, God, oh, yeah. God, my wrist, oh, oh, and he, like, can barely do the next mm-hmm. thing. They definitely tried to shoot something, like, I swear they, I he- I've heard about something where they, like, tried to shoot something, and it could have been, like, rated R for that scene, but, like, they didn't. Maybe I'm making this yeah. up, but, like, oh. I feel like that totally could have been a thing. Maybe that's why they made it so la da Yeah. Yeah, it would have been too much suffering. They wouldn't have allowed that in a radio. Yeah. Oh, I said the grief screams are what really get me. Not that, like, grief screams e- equals rated R, but, like, the fa- it's, like, the human reactions to things, mm. I think, that really, yeah. like, set the tone for how a movie yeah, should be Yeah, but, like, rated. there's still no blood and with that. La-da-da, cutting my arm off. Yeah. <laughs> Do, 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 and then five seconds later, do, he gets do, a do, silver do, do, one. It's fine. It's all good. Oh, it's fine. Um, question: Can Wormtail's silver hand automatically defeat Remus Lupin the werewolf? Shit. <laughs> Is it silver or silver colored? That's he just question. chokes Remus, and it's like Remus just immediately turns to dust. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Poke him in the chest. <laughs> Knowing Voldemort, it's not going to be silver. It's going to be something much more utilitarian. Mm. So it's going to be like silver colored steel or something. Speaking like of that. Voldemort, okay. um, did wait, 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 oh. wait. Shh, 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 the the spelling of how you should pronounce it is Rafe Fine. That's too many Fs. Like <laughs> Rafe Fine. That's what I said. I don't understand. Just use it all one word, Rafe Fines. Just just put it on I together. just like don't understand like how Ralph equals Ray. And I never have, and like maybe I'm getting to the bottom of it right now. Like what what where's this name from? Is so it's Germanic, it's Irish, it's Scottish. Mm. It's from the old Norse, um, like 
Wraithelfer, which means Council of the Wolves. So that's fucking cool. Yeah. Ray finds your name means Council of the Wolves. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. that's pretty Here's cool. the thing. With a name like that, if I know you personally, I will always call you by whatever name you want to be called. That is Rafe. not a problem. Rafe. Tell me how you want it pronounced. Rafe. If you give it to me on paper, I'm just going to pronounce it Ralph. Yeah. It's the <laughs> same thing with Siobhan slash Siobhan. Oh, like, I hate everyone's that. Everyone's going to say oh. Siobhan until they meet someone named oh. Siobhan, and they're like, oh, well, it's Gaelic. How it do you think you spell Searsha? So, no, it's okay. We have to stop, actually. So <laughs> do we think that Voldemort was cast well? Do we think that Ray yeah. Fiennes did yes. a good job? We didn't see enough of the yeah. fetus, yes. though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a you thing. Gross. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> um, playing- Justice for Bertha Jorkins, not even in the fucking movie. Bertha who? Yeah, exactly. Who's Bertha Jorkins? Is that her baby? I don't know. Let's move on. So then Voldemort is like, bring my people unto me. Okay. Wrong answers only. What was Lucius Malfoy doing when he got summoned tonight? Combing his hair. Being a dick. Taking a shit. Okay. <laughs> Wait, okay. Carrie says taking a shit. Charlie, you said coming yeah. his hair. Andrew, what what was he doing? Wrong answers only. Uh, well, I said being a dick. So if I'm going to go wrong answers only, then he was donating to charity of his own. <laughs> because he's always being a dick. So. I guess not like yeah. so wrong, but like slight. I think he was taking a bath. <laughs> oh, in milk. See, I just wanted <laughs> to be something like upper privileged, upper class, and pointless. So like. Bath. I want to imagine him doing something like watching a puppet show. <laughs> like something with no, like why in the Him and his wife you... were taking like a mixology class. Honestly, maybe. <laughs> no, that's like maybe too cool. Maybe he was in the they middle like, of had, date night yeah. with his wife. <gasps> and Narcissa Perfect. was like, fine, fucking go, I guess. Whatever. Well, she hates being there anyway. I was going to say, she's probably like, please go. Just get out of my way. <laughs> oh, God, I'm just going to finish this wine and go home. Like, go or else we're all dead. I want to see him with his sister-in-law instead. That would be better. We're going to, like, rapid fire through this. Get your, dis- get your disgusting foot off of my baby Cedric's face. I can touch you now. Uh, we don't get the bow to me thing. Priori incantatum. I love that. And that's the whole thing. Right? Yeah. 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 The book describes Priori incantatum as a web, but the movie does more of, like, a bunt cake situation. They're also not floating. <laughs> They're supposed to be floating. They're not floating. Yeah, the book is like, let me take you to a more dramatic locale. And the film is like, you already know we're in the most dramatic locale. With that fucking yeah. Grim Reaper right behind you. <laughs> so then it's like, take my body back. And then Harry does. Harry gets the, he gets the porky and he gets the body back and he goes back to the school. And then it's like, burnt, 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 Everybody Cheers. raise your glasses of whatever you've got. Cheers to Cedric. Water, water, water. And I'm the only one drinking alcohol. That's great. That's great. <laughs> I've been up since three o'clock. There's no alcohol right okay. now. Oh. No, 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 no. Everyone's, everyone has every right to do whatever they want to. But when I'm like, oh, I'm the only one drinking You always alcohol. say that when we're on the call. But whenever I want to do just a little bit of meth, you get all weird about it. This scene in the books, in the movies are so different. And I, I don't blame the movie for that. The book is so disconnected. Um, like Harry is in like really serious shock and there's no way to really replicate that in the movie. So instead we get Amos Diggory sobbing openly with an entire school watching. I just love that music though that plays like where it's like it just abruptly Boom. like oh Dun-dun-dun. wait. Dun-dun-dun. Everything's awesome. They won. <laughs> Yay. Oh is awesome. wait. Maybe not. Oh shit. Oh, said word is yeah. dead. And then Everything it's like, is cool over. when Cedric di- oh. oh god no no. <laughs> So then Moody takes Harry away. Not Moody. The real Alistair Moody. Well, yeah, Never. whatever. <laughs> he takes him to the whatever. real Alistair Moody, who's in that shit box. Yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> the shit trunk. So in the book, in the book, Mad-Eye Moody is knocked unconscious, and therefore he does not take his potion when he needs to. In the movie, mm. apparently Mad-Eye Moody has been super distracted for a full month or more and has completely run out of potion. And they have his actor be like, wait, let me make some potion real quick. And it's like, bro, we n- c- canon takes okay. a month. In the yeah. movie canon, even, it takes a I month. I swear that, like, he was like, I'm going to make, like, this much potion because I shouldn't need very much. Like, the Dark Lord's going to rise, like, at this day. So, like, oh, I probably yeah, won't need this possible. much. Okay, but that's, like, fucking dumb, dude. But that's he a needed, dumb like, one more assume. hour's worth yeah. of potion to fool Harry for this scene, and that was it. Yeah. Maybe like a couple days in case you need to like extract nah. yourself. Well, and can I poke one more hole in that plan? Okay. If your 
Barty Crouch Jr. at this point, why would you stick around during the third task? Right, yeah. Harry's going to be killed. You leave. Because he wants to see Harry's dead body get sent back. He does, (gasps) because he's fucking nuts. But Harry's body never would have come back, though. His body should not have... If if Harry was dead, his body would not have gotten sent back. I just think he's nuts. He probably thinks that Voldemort will. He's like, Voldemort, you're going to do that, right? So I can see? Voldemort's like, sure. I mean, sure, daddy, daddy, daddy. I mean, daddy. look at how he reveals sure. himself. Before he starts fully turning back, he reveals himself by starting to act like a fucking crazy person by like marvelous blood creatures, like, dragons, <laughs> aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> so well, they do the classic like, I, I'm sorry, professor, but I never mentioned a graveyard. <laughs> right. And then in my notes, I labeled this section Veritaserum, but as I mentioned, it, it the Veritaserum <laughs> actually doesn't fucking matter. The movies are drawing some kind of weird parallel between Harry's arm wound and the Death Eater's dark mark. Did that strike anyone I else I didn't understand yeah. why they had to do that. Okay, okay. I'll show you mine if you show me yours. And it's like, I've been stabbed. It's like a comparison <laughs> of dicks, right? Yeah, like yeah. you have a Nazi tattoo and I've been stabbed. <laughs> but it doesn't look... <laughs> it's not the same. I just didn't understand. Was there something about the spell that me- meant they had to stab him in that way? I mean, they literally cut him like across his arm. Like, no. A, a no. Weird not pattern. in the book. Yeah. Well, and I almost get the feeling that they were originally going to have the blood look more like a dark I think mark. that's what it was. It's so dumb, dude. It doesn't look no, like it. Doesn't. Yeah, it's like they have wanted to do it that way, but then they didn't want it to super look like that way because yeah. realistically, there's no reason it should. Right. But like, they were like, well, let's do this. And then after the fact, they were like, well, fuck. Now <laughs> yeah. the line doesn't make any sense doesn't unless they have him show the arm. Yeah. So Yeah. I feel like David Tennant ad-libbed that line and then they had to go back and make it make sense. Yep. Because here's one thing about David Tennant. You just let him do whatever he's going to yeah. do. <laughs> you don't control that man. You just let him act. So... Dumbledore is like, I think Azkaban will find they're missing a prisoner. God, that. So in the in, mm. the in the movie universe, how the fuck did Barty Jr. get out of Azkaban? He, he, I, how? How the fuck did he get out of Azkaban? The only reason Sirius did yeah. was because he was a dog. It's, it's supposed to be inescapable. It Through sheer dumb luck. <laughs> After Sirius escapes, everybody's escaping. Is no. right because mm-hmm. well, I mean, there's the whole thing with like the Dementors and like Azkaban in the fifth one, but that's yeah. is, that's a whole different thing. In this not one, yet. it's not a big deal. Yeah. They just don't notice he's right. gone. Okay, right? D- did so he use his acting died. skills? Did he use his wonderfully beautiful acting skills somehow to get him out oh. of there? That's his oh, only power. Maybe. He's like, I am a Dementor. Like, like <laughs> Lockhart has was one thing. That's. That's Barty Crouch's one thing. I, th- I think the no prize real answer here is that they knew that people who knew the books would already know that the plots changed a lot, and people who don't know the books probably won't think about it that hard. Yeah, just, what a, there's a lot of right? shit that people who haven't read the books in this movie shouldn't think about too but much. But when people who haven't yeah. read the books watch the movie, they're like, what the fuck just happened? Why the fuck did that happen? They skipped Tennant's entire villain monologue, and I feel personally robbed because Tennant would give an amazing villain monologue. Oh, God, yeah. It's just like, well, Veritaserum, uh, I, we just wasted it for no reason. The question Goodbye. is, did they still just, like, kill him? Like, we, d- we don't even get anything about that after that. We don't know what happens to Barty Cross Jr. Uh, another thing, we don't see Harry get sent to the hospital way. No, like, no, please no, tell no. me. He gets sent to the yeah. hospital it smash cuts to Dumbledore being like Cedric Diggory, am I oh right? My God. <laughs> that this you know. fucking dude, this the speech, speech is makes so literally much no better, sense. So much better in the books. In the in the movie, it here's the thing: best acted scene in the entire movie. Like, what's his name? Michael Gambon, um, the new yeah. Dumbledore, yeah. whatever his name is. He, I think he kills that scene. It looks so interesting. Yeah, but it makes no fucking sense. But the lyric, the words are fucking horseshit. (laughs) Yeah. It's like this incredible performance, but to, like, try, like, why would, why would you get this skilled actor to read a fourth grade book report? Yeah. That's essentially what he's doing. Is he doing this amazing performance with like, and then go dog go, the dogs go. Okay, go dog go is a great (laughs) book. Godargo is a great yeah, book. but I wouldn't want that Do like actor my doing a dramatic version <laughs> of Go Dog Go. Catch us on our YouTube this summer. I'm going to do post myself doing a dramatic reading of Go Dog Go. <laughs> so then Dumbledore, after after the funeral thing, Dumbledore comes to visit Harry in his 
dorm room. Yeah, I hate It'd those curtains. Vague for no reason. Terrible. There's nothing wrong with older teachers going and visiting a student one on one in the tower. That's in nothing. Their bedroom? That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's creepy. It's shit. There's not a two teacher rule at Hogwarts, okay? And then we're just like wrapping it up. Bobaton and Durmstrang leave. We don't get the opportunity to address Karkarov at all. I guess he is still just like the headmaster of Durmstrang. Yeah. And then Hermione is Hermione like so shyly is like, <laughs> everything's going to change now, isn't it? <laughs> Duh. And it's like, of course it oh is. Oh my you god! Fucking giggling in it already did to me this summer. Yeah. Like that hurts <laughs> if you know what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. The movie tries to end on, like, a really cheerful, slightly serene note. Yeah. Whereas the book is like, hey, this is fucked. Guys, someone yeah. died. The world is going to crumble. Voldemort yeah. is back. Yeah. Why are we happy? <laughs> That's okay. The next book, they're in denial. So, <laughs> this yeah. movie should have been darker at the end. It ain't just a river in Egypt. So, a couple random things. It is time for us to yeah. wrap up because we've been going for a strong two hours mm-hmm. now. But a couple other random things. Just shout out to our friends in the Discord. Um, I was just trying to chit chat. We did do a whole watch along and that was super mm-hmm. fun. But I also asked um, if anyone had anything really specific that they wanted us to mention in this episode. Yeah. Matt in the Discord server pointed out that in the Chamber of Secrets and the Deathly Hallows, Polyjuice Potion changes oh, your yeah. voice. But here in the Goblet of Fire, Apologies, Pushin doesn't change your voice for plot purposes. <laughs> and um, I know, Charlie, that you and Matt were talking yeah. back and forth about that a little bit, but it does that's just something that doesn't make any effect. No, it sense. doesn't. Also, Ashley on the Discord was talking about things that she missed in the movie that we didn't really have the time to talk about. Um, Dudley and the Toffee, Winky, Spew, Ludo Bagman, also third task obstacles. We haven't talked about Spew at all, but like I would have dropped that too. I think Voldemort was like, yeah, like we didn't need Spew. And like, it's fine that we dropped it. It's okay. But we do need more house elf info. More of the house elf info. More house elf stuff for sure. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing the house elf thing is uncomfortable. JK Rowling was not qualified to write about slavery. And I think, I think that. It was uh, maybe not for the story, but for for bigger reasons, the movies dropping the house elf thing entirely was probably in their best interest. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. My final note about the movies is that I really enjoy that they gave Filch some shenanigans in this book. He got to like set off these cannons and he was doing it wrong the whole that. time. So yeah. like I like that they gave David Bradley something to do. And his shenanigans grow because he did so well in this one. Yeah. Right? yeah, so like, yeah. In every movie, we get increasing sh- fil- sh- shenanigans. Is it yeah. next movie the one where you get the running down the hallway? and It's all good. Yeah. I love the end, though, at the very end of the series where yeah. he's just cleaning up the whole thing. Throws the broom. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to clean all that this shit. That just makes me think. Like, the dragon that ruined, like, parts of the castle, who's going to clean that up? It's Filch. Oh, right. Filch, Filch's ass is up there with a like a suspension wire and a hammer and nails. <laughs> like, why the fuck is the only non-magical person in this castle repairing it? Because he's a wannabe. I mean, he hates the kids because they have what he wants. He's a wannabe. So he's a hanger on. <laughs> wannabe. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. So, Carrie, what is your favorite moment in this whole movie? I think when Hermione tells off Ron at the Yule Ball. Yeah. That's a I good like one. that one. Girls standing up for themselves. Andrew, what about you? What's your favorite moment in this movie? Here's the thing. I like this movie. I do. I honestly don't have a moment like that, though. Because, yeah, like, each nothing moment, stands out. a lot of moments individually are kind of shit. But, like, yeah. the whole movie together I like because of the nostalgia factor. Mm-hmm. But if I'm going to try and be like, this is my, I, I like, uh, the port key. I'll uh-huh. say the port key. Cool. Let's go with that. That's I fun. can go with that. Yeah. Charlie, what about you? I have two moments, and they're both Neville. Okay. It, it, Neville in the, the lake, and then Neville dancing. That's a, that is a good one. Like yeah. like dancing so by himself like, in I've the room. I killed Harry Potter. Just like, oh, oh, that's also a good one. But like, I like it when Neville's being like his like cute little nerdy self. Like, amazing. This is yeah. amazing, oh. Clance. And then like when he's yeah, dancing. Yeah, yeah. And, and Harry's like, can you shut the fuck up? When he's dancing in the shoes, yeah. in his pajamas, in the room, yeah. and they're just like looking yeah. at him like, what the fuck? And he's like so happy. Love those. Good shit. Yeah. My favorite moment of this movie, we haven't talked about it, but is probably the most gayest thing I've ever seen Ron mm-hmm. Weasley do is um after the Quidditch World Cup that we don't get to see, he's like, 
Yeah. Crumb's not a human. He's an animal. He's a force of nature. And I'm personally turned on. He's like giving this speech in yeah. the tent. <laughs> I think you're in love, Ron. Oh, when they hurt. Yeah. I love when they harass him about it. Well, that's that. I'm not going to ask if y'all have anything else to contribute because we simply must stop talking. <laughs> But I'm time. impressed that we covered a three hour movie in only two hours. We did it. We fucking did it. <laughs> Yay. We got through it. Are y'all ready to move on to plugs? Uh, I guess. Carrie and or Charlie, can you tell us just like your elevator pitch for Phantom's Gone Wrong in case anyone has missed it so far? Go ahead, mother. I'm going to give the elevator pitch. Okay. Phantom's Gone Wrong. Uh, basically, we go through different pieces of media that we love or don't always love mostly love, Mm -hmm. and talk about what went wrong with it. You know, it started off with us just arguing about different things, and now we just do it for a podcast. Give us a check out. (laughs) I feel like this movie comparison is, like, very in the vein of what y'all do over there. Just, like, going through Mm -hmm. stuff you love and being like, well, this sucked, and this sucked. But we love it overall, (laughs) and that's the crazy part. Yeah, exactly. I feel like this means we won't be doing an episode on the movie. Like, I, I don't think we can at this point. Yeah, who, I mean, who else would be in that episode? It, it would be you, <laughs> and we just did it. Exact, yeah. You can air this episode on your feed. Yeah, we <laughs> that. Instead of recording it, we'll just add that in. I like that. So, Carrie, what is something that you've been watching, reading, playing, listening to lately that you think the listeners of our podcast would enjoy? Oh, my goodness. Or maybe something you covered recently on Phantom's Gone Wrong. Well, although I know you just covered Harry Potter. We did. <laughs> so we didn't cover recently, but as you mentioned, you guys covered Dogma. We covered Dogma as well, which because of oh, because yeah. we love Alan Rickman so much, and Dogma is is like the basis of a religion. It isn't, but it is. It's it's awesome. <laughs> it's the basis of her religion. Well, it it's because it makes you think sensibly about religion, which religion isn't right, sensible. Exactly. So I have it opens a discourse. Yes, I highly recommend people watch the movie and check out our podcast about it. I'll link that in the show notes. Charlie, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, too many fucking places. You also didn't ask her where you could find her. Oh, but you don't really use social media. I, she I has, she has her Instagram, like but that. yeah. <laughs> hey, it's actually all linked in the show notes. In fact, Charlie, don't even say it out loud because it's linked in the okay, show notes. Okay, okay, cool. It's Green Pixie and or Green Pixie 1-2 and or it's, Green it's, Pixie it's, one, it's two, It's got three. a lot of things. It's usually Green Pixie something. I always have like the same yeah. icon. It's It's fine. You'll find them. What's something you've been watching, reading, listening to, playing lately that you think the listeners of our podcast would well, enjoy? Well, I, I was finally going on the, the DVR because I have a lot of stuff recorded lately. And I, I'm <laughs> watching uh, Good Trouble again. Um, if you've ever seen The Fosters, it's like the sequel show to that. Oh. But it's like a little bit older. It gets even like a little bit more like topical, political sometimes, and even more gay if that was possible, like, like, I'm sorry, we've had like a trans woman character. We've, we've had bisexual characters. Mm-hmm. We have a polyamorous relationship right now. And I'm just loving it so much. Ooh, love it. Good representation on that show. Oh, that's awesome. And Andrew, what about you? What have you been uh, partaking in recently that you think that our listeners would enjoy? I, I don't know if they'll enjoy this, but I have recently fallen in love with a YouTube channel called Horror Travel, H-A-R-R. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's this guy named Danny for uh-huh. Horror Travel that does these cruise ship walkthroughs, right? Oh, nice. And, like, they do everything. They show you every activity, every, uh-huh. like, they even go into other videos with the rooms and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I originally discovered them because I wanted to see, like, what cruise ships had to offer. Right. I have watched hours of this guy walk <laughs> along a cruise ship because he is the most it's just comforting he is so dad in his like he is the essence of fatherhood in one person like all the positive aspects he makes the lamest dad jokes and he makes the same lame dad jokes every uh-huh. time so like anytime they pass by a dessert bar it's got to be some comment about you'll find me here all the time or <laughs> you know this is my favorite spot on the boat nice so like if you need something just in the background to uh-huh. like just allow a guy with a comforting voice with lame jokes uh-huh. and nothing but a positive, mild energy. I highly recommend watching the hard travel of uh, cruise ship walkthroughs. Nice. Thank you so much for that recommendation. I've been your host, Christina. You know where to find me. And the only thing I'm going to plug right now is continuing to listen to this podcast through the summer because y'all know we're about to take a break from the books, but we're about to release some really dope content. We're doing some bonus stuff next episode we're doing a goblet of fire like little recap ask me anything 
The next episode after that, Charlie and I are going to talk about Sorted by Jackson Bird. We also got some other really dope stuff coming out this summer. So please, not that it's not obvious, but like stick with us because it's going to be a great summer for the restricted section. For me. (laughs) And then we'll be starting Order of the Phoenix um, at the very end of August. So I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm very excited for all that is to come. Um, So please stay tuned. Charlie, Carrie, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I don't think anyone could have helped us pick apart this movie as much as That's have. our thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is the whole thing. <laughs> and yeah, there. if you haven't caught Fandom's Gone Wrong's recent coverage of The Prisoner of Azkaban, please do, because it's an absolute delight, and I will be linking it in the show thank notes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Woo. Well, I don't. I didn't write myself an outro to this episode, so that's the fucking end of the episode. <laughs> Bye. Bye. The Restricted Section is stoked to be a member of the Movie Night Crew Podcast Network, featuring some excellent other podcasts, such as Fandom's Gone Wrong, a podcast where Carrie and Charlie, a mother and kid duo, talk about movies, TV shows, and books they both love, and it will probably devolve into friendly arguments. Hello, you awesome nerds out there. Yes, you. Have I got the podcast for you. We've got pop culture, swearing, and all the immature jokes you could ask for. We'll take you on a journey through TV shows, movies, books, and maybe a video game someday. And we'll tell you how they all went wrong. I'm Charlie. And I'm Carrie. And this is Fandoms Gone Wrong. New episodes every other Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. The Restricted section was created by me, Christina Kahn, based on the book series by J.K. Rowling. All music by Ryan Kahn. Logo by Michael Hardison. Support us on patreon.com slash restricted section. For as little as a dollar a month, you can gain access to our Discord community server, which is a really happy place to be. And there are other rewards as well, such as bonus episodes and Zoom happy hour hangouts. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Restricted Section Pod, on Twitter at Restricted Pod, and on Facebook at Restricted Section Pod. Also, feel free to shoot us an email at restrictedsectionpod at gmail.com to share your thoughts, feelings, complaints, conspiracy theories, or even lavish praise. Alright, that the bit has gone on long enough. That movie sucked. I kinda liked it. Movie Night Crew Network.